great Southern Conference matchup. It's a little damp in Boone, North Carolina today, but it's going to have to rain a lot more than this to dampen the spirit of this crowd as one of the great matchups is coming your way as the Marshall Thundering Herd visit the Appalachian State Mountaineers and it's homecoming for ASU. Hello again, everybody. I'm Sam Smith, along with the quarterback, Clip Stout. And we are here, indeed, to watch number one Marshall go against one of their old foes, Appalachian State. And number one coming in, even though Appalachian State has lost a couple of games, Marshall has to come in and play. A great matchup today, Cliff. It is a great matchup. Like you said, ASU's lost three games. But they're a very good football team, and they've got a great record over the last 20 years against Marshall. In fact, they're 5-2 and two under Jerry Moore. The keys of the game brought to you by U.S. Air. Let's start with Marshall and see what they've got to do to get a victory today. Well, they've got to have a balanced attack. They like to mix it up by 50-50 pass and run. They've got to just be poised and stay with their game plan and forget what's happened against App State the past few years. Defensive line has to keep the pressure on a brand new quarterback for Appalachian State and for ASU, I guess the secondary is a question. Secondary could be a big problem. They've got two injuries back there, a starting corner and the strong safety. One is out, one is questionable, so some young guys are going to come in and have to do a good job against a potent passing attack. And of course, void turnovers against number one. Let's take a look at some of our players to watch today in a great one, a great receiver, Randy Moss, just a freshman for Marshall. This freshman's a quarterback's dream. He's 6'5", he can run like the wind, and in just seven games, he's already got 11 touchdown receptions, and he's closing in on the Southern Conference record. He also has caught a touchdown pass in the last seven, which is tied to Marshall record. He could break that today. The other side of the coin, a great running back with the name of Damon Scott, this kid number one in the conference. Damon Scott's a great rusher. He's also their number one receiver. They want to control the game with him on the ground. They don't want to get behind and rely on their passing game. They want to control with Damon Scott. Well, you can already hear that the crowd is starting to get bumped up as number one goes against Appalachian State. ASU has won four out of the last five meetings. Can they do it again? We're back with more of our pregame show and the kickoff from Boone after this timeout. Today's Southern Conference game is being brought to you by Greensboro Convention and Visitors Bureau, by Interstate Johnson and Lane, by Reebok, and by U.S. Air. Well, it's a beautiful fall afternoon here in Boone, North Carolina. The homecoming crowd is starting to file in, and one of the nice things about this game is that Marshall brings such a good crowd as well, and that means we could be close to capacity of 18,000 or more for a great matchup here in the Southern Conference. Sam Smith, along with Clip Stout, working with us today is Matt Swarad. Let's go downstairs and get his feeling on the field. Matt, nice to have you aboard today. Well, thanks, Sam. This game couldn't get any bigger for the Mountaineers. They need a win to keep their playoff hopes alive. The last time these two clubs met, Two years ago here in Boone, a torrential downpour throughout the game. The result, the Mountaineers beating a then number one Marshall team. Well, today it's 55 degrees, but a 40% chance of rain. And as you can tell right now, it is raining. I talked to some of the Mountaineer players. They think rain favors them. We'll see. Let's go back up where it's warm and dry to Sam and Cliff in the press box. Thank you, Matt. Find an umbrella and find it quick. Well, it'll be Marshall kicking off to Appalachian State, and that may be something that we'll find out early here, Cliff. ASU said they got to control the football, keep it away from Marshall. This would be a good opportunity for them to try to do that right now. Well, it's going to do a lot for, for their belief in themselves today. They've got to, they want to establish some kind of drive, not just go out there at three plays and punt. But they, they, they've had a lot of turnovers this year. That could be a problem, too. They've turned the ball over 15 times, and you can't do that against Marshall. They're a team, Marshall's a team that scores a lot of points. They score a lot of points in a hurry. And when you rely on your running game like the Mountaineers do, you don't want to fall behind and, and lay the game in the hands of your quarterback. Well, a couple of... Uh, outstanding former football players himself Jerry Moore and a grad of Marshall Bob Pruitt are waiting for the opening kickoff and Marshall set to kick it off here yeah, they're ready to put a toe into it will be Tim Openlander Openlander not only an outstanding kickoff man but of course was handling the field goal chores before Chris Hansen has stepped on and of course has done all the other things here's the carry it's going to be come straight up the field and carrying it is L.J. Brooks he'll bring it all the way out and they'll have good position field position to start at their own 25-yard line, and ASU brings out their offensive unit. Interesting start for today for Appalachian State. As Brooks got them a good field position, now they turn it over to their quarterback, and that's going to be a youngster by the name of Bake Baker. Baker did not start the game last week, but came on with two touchdowns late on a touchdown pass and brought them from behind to beat Georgia Southern. He gets his first start at ASU today. The stacked running backs. 
They give it to the first man, and this will be a problem for them as Marshall swarms. Matter of fact, that defensive down line may be one of the best in one double-A. They're a very good defensive line. Three of them have four sacks. There you see Baker's numbers from last week, eight of 11, 159 yards, and two touchdowns in that comeback win against Georgia Southern. But that, that front four for, for Marshall is a very tough front four. Well, you see the lineup there. Damon Scott, the leading rusher in the conference, and the split receivers, and Bake Baker, the quarterback. Offensive line, Gruber and Clark, along with uh, Catlip, have been here a long time and they're a good group to, back, to run behind. This time out of the shotgun. Baker will be tested here. Quick hand off on the inside to Scott. Bumps to the outside, and that's what's made him the number one rusher as he takes it forward to the 25. And that, Cliff, when you look at a good rusher, is a guy that waits for his block and uses the block very well. Well, that run there kind of looked like Emmett Smith. He didn't just go busting into the hole 300 miles an hour. He, he picked his hole, took his time, and made a very efficient eight-yard game. You may mention that four of these three of these guys have four sacks or more on that down line. And the secondary is also bolstered up. Uh, Marshall, with a young man by the name of Cunningham. Melvin can cover the field with the best of them. He will play in the NFL. Here's a third down play. Option by Baker. Late pitch to Scott. Not going to make any room. And an excellent pursuit down the line of scrimmage. Paul Toten from Danville, Virginia comes in. He's one of those that has four sacks. They stop him for a loss. And it's going to be putt time for Appalachian State. And not a good message early on. No, it isn't. That's exactly what they wanted to stay away from. They wanted to at least get a couple first downs. And if they couldn't get a score, at least punt and make Marshall take it the whole length of the field. Now Marshall's going to get really good field position here. All-conference punter Alan Gwynn, who's averaging 41.4 yards per punt. That could be a key factor today in the game with both of these. And the deep man, this is dangerous. Tim Martin waiting for the return. And this is a boomer by Gwynn. All the way back to the 24 is Martin. Great speed. Has his legs cut out from Martin. The ball is loose. But the officials are ruling that the turf caused the fumble when Martin was upended on a smashing tackle. And Appalachian State's defense on special teams covers well. And the man getting credit for that great tackle, Spencer Reeves, number 41. He was down in a hurry and just took his feet right out from under him from Canton, North Carolina. Was a tremendous hit. You'll see him come in low and take Martin's feet out from under him. Wow. You can see the ball, the ground does cause the fumble there. You hate to see your team punt, but that is one of the strong points of the Mountaineers. Well, a transfer coming out of Florida. His name is Eric Kressler. will start at the quarterback spot. He is a senior, and he'll look for Randy Moss as his wide receiver, but they'll try the middle, and one of the guys that replaced Chris Parker, the graduate. Running back of Marshall is Eric Thomas, and Thomas, a outstanding player in his own right, is stopped up front by Avery. There's the numbers on Kresser. Not overly impressive in the fact of the number of passes, but look at the yardage he's already got, and look at the touchdowns compared to the interceptions right now for Kresser. Well, that's, all, that's the most important statistic you can have for the quarterback is touchdowns to interceptions. And he'll be looking for this. Randy Moss again. He has 11 touchdown passes already, and there's the front line that'll block for him. It is a rather veteran line, but again, uh, not as good as their defensive line as far as their quality is concerned, but they've done well. Here's a little flare out to the outside, and they swing the ball to the wide receiver on the near side. And coming up with it is Randy Moss. Just trying to get him in the open field, I presume, and let him see what he can do with it. <laughs> we already know what he can do. Uh, he just wants to get the ball. The quick hitch, I tell you, you see more touchdowns off the quick hitch than you do long passes, I think. Defensive down lineman, there's Dexter Cook. He'll back up the line. Interesting enough that both of the linebacking cores are their number one through three tacklers on these teams. There's the secondary, and therein lies the problem, Cliff. That secondary got a piecemeal today for Appalachian State. They've got their work cut out for them. They're inexperienced back there, and this Marshall team, they don't throw a hole lot, but they've got two guys on the team that are averaging close to 20 yards of reception. They're a big play team when they do throw the ball. Well, they look to see if he has the yardage. He does not. They'll need another play to try to do so, and Appalachian State will try to deny that. As Marshall again used one running play by Thomas, and they flare it out to the near side to Moss. Moss and Martin, as you mentioned, a good combo because you have a very big receiver. You quarterbacks like those guys, you can see. And quite obviously, Martin can burn anybody in this league, and so can Moss for that matter. Well, they've been doing it all year. Uh, Martin's a little quick guy that runs the precise routes and gets open. And uh, Ross is just, you know, it reminds me of... Uh, Oh, gosh, who was the receiver with the Jets a couple years ago? It, it, my mind just went blank. But you just got a, me. He's just a tall, skinny receiver that uh, can fly. Doesn't even look like he's running hard when he gets the football. Well, a third down and short yardage. Man in motion slipping down. Presser turns. He's going to have to take it himself. He also slips, but I think he's got the first down. Now they're marking his knee down. He came up short. 
So again, they marked the knee as he dove forward, but again, as his foot slipped out, his knee did go down, and I'm sure the replay will bear it out. Fenderson, who made 18 tackles, tying a defensive back record at Georgia Southern's game last week. Let's watch it here closely. There you see the, the replay. That oh, play yeah. was doomed from the beginning. His knee did, in fact, touch down, but the motion man fell down. That play was just one that they'll go back to work on in practice next week. So even though the Marshall def uh, the offense couldn't get going, they do for us. Chris Hansen to punt the ball away. 42-yard average. And the deep man standing back for Appalachian State. You see the numbers. By the way, he has a 70-yarder to his credit already. And back deep for Appalachian State. Getting ready to try to return the football is Desmond Howard. Or Adams, excuse me. <laughs> they wish. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wish they had that uh, Heisman Trophy winner. I wish I could have remembered the name Al Toon a minute ago that when was I was it. thinking of it. There you go. Well, we'll both get our names right here in a minute. A couple too many hits to the head during my career, I guess. Delay of game on Marshall. Hanson will have to step back a little further. It'll be interesting to watch these punters also on a little slippery turf because you plant that foot and it's not there. You could have yourself a problem. And a good look at Hanson from uh, just over the line of scrimmage. No wind to speak of here at Kid Brewer Stadium. Light rain falling most of the morning in a slippery turf. And Adams is waiting back. Left footer. He'll tower this one. They'll get great coverage. Not excellent distance, though. And they're going to walk away from They'll get good distance with that. And look at this down at the three-yard line. Oh, what a nice bounce for Marshall. And excellent coverage by their special teams. As a man down on top of it, they down it inside the five-yard line and get it at the three-yard line. So Appalachian State will take over the football in their second possession of the afternoon and deepen their territory as Marshall's number one defense tries to deny him on homecoming here in Boone. State and it's had great success here, coach of the year three times, and last year was undefeated through the conference. Other side is Bob Pruitt. This is a guy that played running back, tight end, and defensive back at Marshall when he was a player. Defensive coordinator the last two years at Florida before getting a call as his alma mater. What a great thrill it was for him to come back home. It sure was. I guess during his career, they were training him to be a coach, making him play every position. Bake <laughs> Baker, you can see the problem he's got with that front four looking you right in the face they hand it off for the second back through and that's the way they'll try to break it as scott brings it out to the 15 and again using those blocks very very well he came into the game by the way at 98 yards short of a thousand yards and they'd love to have him over 100 again today if that big line keeps opening up holes he'll close in on that 98 yards pretty quick they like to go over the left side behind sean clark and chad groover both guys going right in that 300 pound range and that's where the beef is and they're going to try to take advantage of their size advantage Good look at the senior running back, 5'10", 202, out of a Cedar Grove, North Carolina. A first down is Baker. Flares it to the outside to Scott. As Cliff said, he's not only the number one rusher in the conference, but one of the top receivers for the team. And that very much what they try to do with Martin and, and Moss on the other side is get Scott in the open field. Well, they want to give him the football every single chance they get. He's got 22 receptions. He's carried the ball 158 times. He's going to handle it about half the time they have the ball. It's a good play for a running back like Scott. Just swing him out there. The linebackers are dropping deep in the zone. At that time, uh, Baker just kind of stared at him a little too long and gave the linebackers a chance to move up and make the play. Interesting. Marshall's two uh, deep sa safety men have made the last two tackles, which means Appalachian State was executing on the line of scrimmage, but not that time because they really closed it down in a hurry, giving it to the first back through that time, Young. And little or no gain for Appalachian State brings up a third down play. Just a simple dive right up the middle, fooled a couple people, but not Larry McLeod, who stops the play right at the line of scrimmage. Well, he doesn't, uh, not many people fool him. Number one tackler <laughs> with 64. Young man out of uh, Hunt, uh, Huntington, West Virginia, homegrown product, and uh, I imagine he's quite happy he's playing right at home. I'm sure he is. Mom and dad and the family probably watching in the stands across the way. They always bring a great crowd from Marshall. Third down play, big one for Appalachian State now. As Baker looks to throw underneath and incomplete. Adams was receiver wide open that time, but could not hang on to it. And Otis Smith, who normally has a great set of hands, having made 12 catches for 292 yards, I think, Cliff, he was looking to find an opening to run to. Well, he had a big one. That was the zone defense dropped deep. He ran a little slip route underneath, was wide open, and he took the his eyes off the ball just long enough for it to hit him right between the eyes. Gwen is forced to punt this time. He does have some punting room again, as his offense at least moved him out of his end zone. And Tim Martin waits back at around his own 42, make it 38-yard line. This is a driving punt. 
They probably won't get as good a coverage on this one as Martin does have an opening at midfield. Takes it into Appalachian State territory and dives to the 45. That line drive kick got him at least an opportunity to get some running room. So Appalachian State is forced to punt for the second time. Spencer Reeves is on the stop. And it means that Marshall will take over the football and that'll bring in their dangerous passing team led by Eric Cresser. There's no score. Homecoming here in Boone. Marshall and Appalachian State. And, of course, just before the Halloween, you know, that guy looked better. Uh, he looks better that way, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Marshall, the first and 10 at the 45-yard line of Appalachian State. And Martin's the man in motion. Presser with a rocket for uh, arm. He throws, and there's Moss. The ball's up for grabs and intercepted. And Brooks picks it off. L.J. Brooks out of Robbins, North Carolina, gets the first turnover of the day. We said Appalachian State had to avoid it. Marshall, of course, had to well, but they turn it over on the intercept, and Brooks got that in midair. Well, L.T. Brooks is the one corner that's playing. The corner on the starting corner on the other side is out. Kessler steps up, tries to throw the ball, and Rush should have made that catch. The ball's right in his hands. It's a little slippery. The field is wet, so every time that ball's snapped, you're going to get a little film of water on the ball. Cluster throws it a little bit high, but that ball should be caught, and that's the kind of breaks App State's going to need. And you saw also who was back there dropping in the uh, deep drop, and that, of course, was Copley, their outstanding linebacker. They may have got a hand on that as well. And it's right back in the hands of Appalachian State. They, of course, have had to punt the ball away twice, and they'll see if they can get the offense going, and now their best field position of the day out of their own 43-yard line. Wide receivers coming split to the left side, tied in on the right side as Baker looks over the defense. Looking to try to get the ball to Scott. Stringing out the defense, and there's the footing goes awry, and B.J. Cohen, along with Thomas Maxwell, come up to make the stop. Cohen is one of those guys from Connolly, Georgia. He is not only one of their top tacklers with 52, but he, along with Lyon and Toten, all have four sacks, as you see how well they strung this out. He does a, does a tremendous job stringing this out. You see him there with Chad Gruber just driving him not only deep into the backfield, but wide to the sideline. That play, uh, he didn't get credit for the tackle, but it was his play. Marshall, along with Scott Smythe, are their safety man. Actually, Marshall is a rover. He'll kind of get all over the football field. This time comes to the double split to the left as Baker's throwing over the middle, and it's complete. Field is Scott, and he's got it down at the 35-yard line. They just ran him straight, didn't even fake to him coming out of the line of scrimmage. And Scott was wide open, and you talk about the soft underbelly before Emory can make the stop. Uh, Scott and Appalachian State are on a big roll. Right out of the playbook of the old Pittsburgh Steelers. You got a two-deep zone. You send a running back out of the backfield. As soon as he gets past the linebackers, deliver the ball. If you throw it any higher and let it give him room to run under, then the safeties can come in and make the play. But in a two-deep zone, they can't, can't get there in time on a short pass. Emory and Smythe collaborating to bring it down. First and 10, Appalachian State, 36. Scott again will find a little room on the right side. Ball controlled by Appalachian State. Talking to Jerry Moore early this week. He said, Sam, we know we have to keep the ball out of the very explosive hands of Marshall. They average nearly 45 uh, points per game, and if they don't have the football, they can't do anything with it. Boy, wasn't that brilliant. That was mine, by the way. And quite obviously, your material, and Marshall, of course, does not have the ball. Appalachian State getting a big break on an intercept. Second down, gain of three. They'll need seven for the first. Young is the fullback. Scott is set seven yards back. A bake baker making his first career start at Appalachian State. And what a time to start against number one Marshall. A flag is down as Scott finds no room on the right side. It's one thing also, Cliff, in a game like this with such high emotions, you can expect to see a few little anxious moments, some jump on the line of scrimmage. This being only the first one we've seen in an early part of the game shows good concentration on both sides. Well, we, we, we talked about it right there. Marshall's drawn off sides. And... Uh, we talked about their poise. They're the number one team in the country, but I, I sense a little frustration from this Marshall team because they haven't had much success against the Mountaineers. So I think right now they may be a little more anxious than the Mountaineers are. Harold Bender, by the way, is our referee today out of Charlotte, North Carolina. As Jerry Moore consults with his coaches up in the press box, Bob Pruitt just looking on to see what the penalty was, and it's going to go against Marshall. And a five-yard step off will set up a second down and roughly about two yards for Appalachian State. Baker's had the luxury of coming to the sideline to visit with his offensive coordinator for Appalachian State. Bob Pruitt making an emphatic point on the Marshall sideline. Second and two for ASU. The handoff to Scott. Gaping hole may have it at the 10, the 5. Dives, touchdown Appalachian State. 
Sam, tremendous job by the old line. Open up that quick hole right up, right up the middle. Marshall showed blitz, and sometimes you get a little trap going right up the middle. It can spring wide open, and you're past the linebackers and into the secondary before anybody knows what's hit, what's hit them. And Appalachian State continues their successful run against Marshall. Look at the strength as he draws away from one of the tacklers here. Right there, that great stiff arm. Tremendous job dragging the defender and then reaching out, stretching the ball into the end zone. The ball crossed the plane and, and hit the ground before he, he released it. Jay Sutton will try to add the seven of the school board, and he will not get it. He just pushed it off to the right, and that could be a crucial point before it's all over. But wait, there is a flag down, and Mr. Benders and his staff will discuss. Well, some of the Mountaineers are pointing towards Marshall, so it looks like they're going to get another crack at it. By the way, Scott already six carries for 46 yards. That play uh, took only four, 57 yards, and took 210 off the clock to score for Appalachian State after the big intercept. I think with Baker in the lineup, it does two things for you. Number one, you've got a better passer. Hardy is more of a, Gerald Hardy is more, Gerard Hardy is more of a running quarterback. He's got almost 500 yards rushing so far this year. Baker's the better passer. And when you have the better passer in there, the defense has to play on us, which should open things up a little bit more for Damon Scott. So cool. far, it looks like that move was a good one. Appalachian State getting a break as the penalty's on Marshall, so they get another try at it. And I'd almost lay odds that Jay Sutton will not miss two in a row. Alan Gwynn, the punter, is the holder. Good snap, good hole. This one is up, and he does get this one. So Appalachian State capitalizing on the first and only turnover of the game so far in the first period. With 7.30 left to go in the first period, they go on a 57-yard march with Damon Scott, the number one rusher in all of the Southern Conference, and closing in on the top five of all of the conference, gets the touchdown, and Appalachian State leads by a score. Well, Marshall with a seven-point lead. Excuse me, Appalachian State with a seven-point lead. As we were talking about, Marshall has to get things going, but the one thing they have to do is to shore up the defense on the line. It's a little porous right now. It really is, right? Again, they show blitz right there. You couldn't see with that replay, but they ran a quick little trap up the middle. When you're running the blitz, there's no secondary people behind your front seven. They're, they're, they have to line up over the tight end or whatever in case someone releases for a pass route. So that middle's wide open. You break the crease, you're gone. Scott, by the way, is less than 50 yards away from reaching 1,000 for this season. He's third all-time in rushing here at Appalachian State. A couple of good ones ahead of him. John Settle, along with Chip Hooks. 3,453 yards by Scott coming into today's game, and he's just adding to it. Appalachian State getting ready to kick off. They'll get the toe into it with Jay Sutton as there is some conversation going on with the secondary, the linebackers, and the linemen all trying to make sure they get that, uh, particularly that little over the over the top pass to Scott, I think, squared away. Well, in the two deep zone, somebody has got, one of the linebackers has to pick up both on one side the tight end, on the other side of running back, so they can't get down into the secondary quickly. Holy mackerel, Sutton has just sent it from here all the way up to Tennessee. Knocks it right out of the back of the end zone. As Moss and Martin had nothing more to do than just watch it sail away, and that it was without the benefit of the win. Here at Kid Brewer Stadium, a great kickoff by Jay Sutton. Well, he showed a tremendous leg right there. You're right, there's no wind. This is really a perfect day for football if the rain uh, doesn't come back. It's a nice, cool day, cool enough for the linemen to have fun, dry enough for the quarterbacks to throw the football. We, by the way, will be going downstairs in a few moments to Matt Swear to kind of get an update on how that footing is down on the turf as Eric Kressler gets ready. First and 10 for Marshall. Wide receiver split to the left side. Moss along with Martin in the slot. They give it off to Thomas. Good pursuit along the line of scrimmage by Appalachian State. As coming up is Coakley, who else is kind of filling the line. And right in behind him was a guy with a, one of the great names, Rocky Hunt. you got to like that. <laughs> Anybody named Rocky. I'll tell you what, Coakley, he, people are high on him. He's a little, some say he's a little short for linebacker, but then the name Sam Mills comes up with the Carolina Panthers. Sam Mills, one of the best I've played against. By the way, Thundering Herd has scored in the first six minutes of every game this year until coming to Appalachian State. They, by the way, lost on their home field last year, 10 to three in a late comeback by Appalachian State. Lost by 10 here two years ago. Presser, time to throw, throws it over the middle. Look what I've got. Coming up with the catch and taking it down all the way down to the 34 yard line. Cole Cloth gets it down to the 39 and that'll be enough for the first down and what poise by Cresser standing in that pocket. He, he, the play was designed to open up quicker. It didn't, he kept his feet, he didn't get happy feet, stood there and let Colclaw get open. Hey, they've got to be in a little bit of shock. Not only have they not scored in the first six minutes, but they've outscored their opponents by 100 points in the first quarter this year, 117 to 17. 
They may have found another gear now if this passing game gets cranked. And here's Cressley's going to throw a couple in a row. That's Martin. Sprints to the outside, finally taken down from behind by Fenderson. As Gordon drops him down, third leading tackler. And with Martin, his first catch of the day, by the way, he needed only two yards receiving to pass 2,500 yards. Third player in the history of Marshall to do so. When you've got a receiver like Martin, this is all you have to do. Get the ball to him as quickly as possible. Let him use his running ability. There you see the face mask on the tackle. Good look at the young man. Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. And a step off against uh, Appalachian State. So now they, who had the benefit of the penalty on the extra point, now get a step off after a good gain. And Marshall may be starting to find their gear. By the way, updating the Southern Conference, East Tennessee State, another one of the undefeated teams in the conference, leading Furman 14-9. They're on the second period of their game at Johnson City. Martin's the man in motion. Presser. Good five-step drop. Throws to Martin. Too tall. Defended well back there. And a good job by the linebacker, Marvin Hodge, from Raleigh, North Carolina. And a good drop by the linebackers. Hodge, by the way, likes to come in. And he'll blitz from that linebacker spot. He'll fake it, drop back, and coverage as he does there. He's got nearly three sacks uh, for the year as well. So he's a, a guy that has dangerous both up front and in the secondary as well. He, he's a very versatile linebacker. I like his speed and his ability to get things done. That was a very dangerous throw because he picked up the back of the receiver going man-to-man -man down the middle with a free safety sitting in the middle. If, he, if Kessler, Kessler throws that ball a second later, it's picked off. Well, Wicks, number two, has joined the trio of receivers on the near side, and they drop it off. And get it to the outside. Running with it is Eric Thomas, the tailback out of the backfield. And there's that little wrinkle coming out of the backfield for Marshall as they make another gain and another first down. Let's head downstairs to Matt Swearhead. Matt. All right, Sam, that field condition update you asked for. This is a new turf here at Kid Brewer Stadium. Put in this past year. It's holding water very well. Right now, it's not really raining. A bit of a sprinkle every now and then. So if App keeps the lead, if it does rain later, it's going to play in the favor of the Mountaineers. So even without the umbrella, he's strudging through a little bit of sogginess on the sideline. Marshall right now is marching up and down the field as Eric Thomas, good trap block on the left side, and Thomas is drugged down. But they gain about eight or nine yards. And now that offensive line, and I tell you, one of the things that's very important, you of course know it far better than I do, Cliff, is the fact that the adjustments made on the sideline and the offensive line coach has done it. Well, they seem to have made some big adjustments. They had absolutely nothing their first few possessions. Now look at the size of this hole on the left side. Thomas does a good job holding on as, as uh, Di Bernardo tries to tackle the ball and strip him. Good hole. You know, this guy's averaging nine yards a carry, so you can bet they're going to go to him as much as they can. Rain continues to come down. Thomas with... 13 yards receiving and nine yards on the rush. Look on Cresser out to Martin. And he'll be forced out of bounds on the far side. But again, they've got wrinkles, and still we have not seen Randy Moss, who's one of their top receivers, drop the pass earlier. Martin seems to be the favorite target right now. And out of the backfield, Eric Thomas for this Marshall offense, first and 10 as they drive down to the 19-yard line of ASU. Randy Moss with 11 touchdown catches for the season. Seven consecutive games with a touchdown and hard to deny for Marshall. Presser going to the end zone to Moss, and there he is on cue. He makes the touchdown grab for Marshall. There apparently is going to be, I believe, a flag down. Or is it the TD? No, it'll count. And Moss will catch in the back of the end zone. And you talk about a tough catch under a lot of pressure in the back of the end zone. Well, the flag was for defensive interference. Uh, Moss did a good job. The ball was thrown a little bit behind him, so he slowed down, used that big six foot five, 210 pound body to shield off the defender. And the defender did hit him before he caught the ball. But when you're when you're that big, you get a little defender on you. You're going to have a field day with him if the quarterback can get anywhere close. Moss, by the way, has just broken a Marshall record. That's his eighth straight game with a touchdown pass. Breaks the old record in 1979 set by Tony Brown. So a couple of record holders today as Moss again grabs it in for his eighth consecutive game with a touchdown pass. Well, I'm sure he was starting to lick his chops before that play. Tim Martin, <laughs> let him catch the passes and take you downfield. Now, now you're in my territory. Let me have the ball and score the touchdown. Tim Openlander will be trying the extra point. Moss, 29 yards on the touchdown reception as here's the kick. It's up and it is good. And we are tied at 5-19 left to go. 
here in the opening period as Appalachian State capitalizing on a turnover and Marshall just taking it from the length of the field in their own 20 on an 80 yard drive sparkled by the passing and running of not only Thomas the catching of Martin and a touchdown pass by Moss as the offense is in full gear. Here it is. It's just a thin post. Dallas Cowboys make this famous. There you see Moss doing a good job using his body to shield off the defender. Tried to get an arm in there. And he'd rather have the interference penalty than a touchdown catch, but he lost. He had the interference penalty and still gave up the touchdown. Kressler, as we said, he's not a real flashy passer. He's just accurate. He's smart, and he gets the ball to the right people. Well, the pass was not only very well thrown, as you indicated, but also Moss at 6'5", working against Chuck Payne at 5'9", and therein lies another one of the problems for Payne. Makes me want to suit up. <laughs> Eight plays, 80 yards, 215 on the clock. Good look at Moss there with his touchdown reception. As they'll be kicking off to Appalachian State. And now, like a good tennis match, it has now been volleyed into ASU's court. And they on homecoming try to get this homecoming crowd involved in the game. Certainly the intercept got them uh, certainly in the game and the touchdown added to it. And there is that adjustment going on on the sidelines again. Well, they're off. App State's got to hope now that their defensive adjustments don't match their offensive adjustments that Marshall made. That looked too simple. Standing back deep are Adams along with Brooks to return the kick. And again, apparently the penalty, a 15-yard personal foul penalty marched off against ASU. So they'll be kicking off at midfield. And if... Uh, Openlander gets any kind of toe into this one. ASU shouldn't have much of a run back here, and they will not as he skips it in and out of the end zone. It'll be first and 10 for ASU at the 20-yard line. ASU had good success of swinging the ball to Scott, throwing it over the middle. You know that uh, right now Marshall must have made some adjustments. What else in their offense can Appalachian State do to throw a little wrinkle into it at this time? Give the ball to somebody besides Scott. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't done that yet. Any, you know, anything else would be a flea flicker right now. But uh, they're going to keep going to him until Marshall does something to stop it. You know, another key receiver that we have not heard from, he dropped a pass early, was Otis Smith. And that'll be a man that's flanked to the left for the stack running backs. And they do fake the handoff. And here's Baker throwing deep. And almost an intercept on an excellent play by Goins. And a flag is down, Albers. Apparently he did get some contact on the wide receiver. Trying to get up field. I believe that was Burton. Kevin Burton on the fly pattern. And Goins again back. Got his hands on the football, but they'll bring it all the way back. And again, they'll march it off from where? Mr. Bender and his staff will discuss. Goins, by the way, is still down on the sidelines over on the Marshall sideline, just down from their bench. Offensive interference. It is a push off again on Burton as Goins had the position. And Burton from behind did the push. And there's Goins. See if we can see what happens here from from the press box. It's looking down the field. It looked like they both just went up to catch the ball. Let's see if there's any shoving going on here. I don't see it. I don't see it. They're both jumping up going for the football. Jump. I'll tell you what, I think that's a great play by the receiver just to make sure it's not intercepted. And I don't see the interference. Saw so the step off against ASU back at their own 10 yard line. A little delay handoff goes to Damon Scott. He reaches the linebackers, but that's all. Get him a little running room on the second down play, but not much as McLeod leads the host of tacklers for Marshall. Boy, McLeod hits you. That's it. It looked like it looked like Scott had a hole there, and he cut back, hits McLeod, didn't go forward another inch. Good to see Goins up and walking around on the sideline here, putting his lid back on, which would indicate he may be ready to come back in. Look at this. Pretty decent hole off the right side of the offensive line. He turns back in. Boom. Boom. It's all over. <laughs> And another very active player, Thomas Maxwell, number nine, the rover back, also up to give some help there. Second down, roughly about 16 to go. As you see him switching the defense in front of Baker. He throws over the middle. It's going to be complete. And they get it out to the 19-yard line. And with a diving catch, the Appalachian State Ball Club gets themselves out. And the catch made by number 80. That's a Jody Gibson. Jody, not on our spotter board but one of those uh, receivers they put in and he comes in for an excellent catch that was a nice catch when you're coming directly across the field like that it's a hard throw to throw too, to lead a guy that's going directly perpendicular to you and he makes a nice catch the balls low and behind him he slides makes a grab what well, Toten had a shot on Baker just before he released that ball on a third down about 11 ASU Baker's back over the middle it's complete 
And they've got a first down out at their own 36-yard line. Making the catch is the man they wanted to go to, and that's Otis Smith. Has now risen the occasion with a big catch for the Mountaineers. I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with Bake Baker right now. He stands in there with a lot of poise. This is his first start. He's playing against the number one team in the country, and he's just standing in there firing. And credit the offensive line maybe to how good he feels right now. He hasn't been touched, and you're playing against the front four that's got three people with over with four sacks. You saw the tackle was made by Goins, by the way, who is back in there again. Bake Baker, four of five for 47 yards already this afternoon for ASU. This time they hand it off to Scott, trying to catch him a little off guard. They'll lose a yard on it. Toten is the first man to reach him. Young man out of Danville, Virginia, six feet, 239. Just a sophomore with four sacks. They say he could be, along with B.J. Cohen, a couple of the finest ones they've had come through there in a while. Well, they're awfully good. You know, I'm, I'm getting confused looking down there and seeing number five at six, lined up at defensive tackle and defensive end. <laughs> Looks like they got a whole bunch of DBs out there. You know, we talked before the game that the Marshall pass rush would be a big factor here, and so far it hasn't been there, and Baker's having a lot of success throwing the football. Good blocking along that line out of the shotgun. Baker throws over the middle with the incompleted pass, or do they make a catch? No, it's incomplete. Like Marshall it. wanted it going the other way, but the pass was never fully contained as Scott couldn't get a hold of it. It almost looked like he caught, was trying to hang on to it and was stripped as he went down. I don't know if that ball did hit the ground. Or the, the, the referee just blew a quick whistle. Bob Pruitt, a very soft-spoken man. We had the opportunity of uh, talking to him regularly on our weekly show on the Southern Conference. And again, when he first got the job, he just almost, as a matter of fact, at his press conference, had tears in his eyes that he's able to come back. And now, those tears of a joy, the way this team has played. They're tied, however, as we close in on the 238 mark of the first period at Appalachian State. A third down play for the Mountaineers. And they dump it over the middle. The linebackers spell it out. There's no place to run there as the secondary fills in well and makes it with Scott Smythe again, the free safety making the play. And it's going to be punt time here for ASU. As I mentioned on that touchdown run, when you blitz, you've got to have somebody picking up the back and the tight end if they release. That time, Marshall did blitz. The quarterback read it. But Smythe did a good job picking up his man at the line of scrimmage and stops it for about a half a foot gain. Gwynn's got a punt for the third time this afternoon. He'll get it out of there, hit it about his own 25 or 26-yard line as Tim Martin waits back just outside his own 20. This will be a towering punt. Martin calls for the fair catch and makes it right at the 25. So the Thundering Herd will take over the football with less than a couple of minutes to go in the first period. A team that has outscored their opponents by over 100 points in the opening period. For the first time this year, did not score in the first six minutes, but they scored to make it a 7-7 game. Appalachian State secondary, we kind of questioned that. As you take a look at the series, App State, 14 of the 20 games played, four out of the last five, but today, secondary, a little piecemeal, certainly going to be one that they'll have to look out for today. Well, the secondary looked look suspect for sure on that last drive. It just looked too simple. Martin making a couple nice short catches, turning it up for 10, 12-yard gains, and then Randy Moss doing what he does best on the post for the touchdown. Presser has Moss in motion. He'll go back to the same side at Martin and makes it a trips left. Good protection. They swing it out on the far side, getting it on the catch and taking it out of bounds. And they swing it out to the tight end. That's uh, Jarrett Long. And they'll gain a couple of yards at most on the play. Well, make it only about a yard and a half. So that one smelled out and defended well by Appalachian State. And Chuck Payne, the young man that was burned for the touchdown the pass a moment ago by Moss, makes the stop. Nothing pretty here. Same thing they did last drive. Now maybe here is Appalachian State's adjustment. They're not giving such a cushion for that short out so the receiver can't turn up and pick up 12 or 15 yards. Which means there's probably a little hole somewhere they'll try to exploit. Let's see if Cressler's going to try to find it. No, nope, they'll give it off for the first back through. And with some running room, Marshall is on the run. And taking it straight up the field is Doug Chapman. Chapman along with Turner both filling in for the injured Eric Thomas early in the year. And Chapman was named as one of the players of the week in the Southern Conference, one of his earlier games. And he rips off a big gain out to the 44-yard line. Huge hole off the right side. Good cut back by Chapman. He's got some speed. Picks up about 20 yards before he goes down. But here's another guy. He's averaging almost six yards a carry. Reed and Wilson on the right side opening up that hole for him. Here's a handoff again. If it ain't broke, don't, fi don't fix it. And they do with Chapman as he takes it out over the 45, out to the 47-yard line. As that time, Steve Carson 
Defensive end from Durham, North Carolina, 6'2", 245 on the tackle for ASU. Well, that, that time Carson broke it. He did now break they it. they got to fix it. Now we'll see what they fix it with. And remember those little uh, flare passes they were trying to go? Let's see if they fake that and throw it out there and then try to come back with something else. They're well, going to go trips left for sure. What they've been doing is just clearing out with the two outside guys and running the inside guy in a short out. Here you got Mar Martin coming back in that same position. Just to hitch this one. And here it comes to Moss. Dangerous fan in the open field. As that time Johnson had a handful. Moss, however, with that great speed and some good size, just jukes him out of position, takes it for a first down. As a flag is down back here at the line of scrimmage, however. You see the time almost winding out the entire first period with a 7-7 tie. And therein lies probably almost a successful gain here for Appalachian State to be in the game with Marshall. They knew they had to be if they had a chance to win the game today. And they certainly have done that by scoring first off the intercept. And then Marshall having to force to go 80 yards for the score to tie it at 7-7. And, of course, the procedure penalty against Marshall will step him back five and brings up the second down. And about 13 yards here from the original from the line of scrimmage after that gain of two by Chapman earlier. Well, App State with their success against Marshall the past few years, the longer they stay in this game, the more they're going to believe in themselves and the, and the momentum turns their way. It plays right into their hands. And certainly the hometown crowd on homecoming could be a benefit as well. Presser, when this ball snaps, will be the final play of the period. And the handoff, Chapman slipped just as he got the handoff, and he'll gain only a yard. And that will do it here for the first period. First man to reach him is Jackie Avery out of Garner. And Jackie at 6'2", 264, put a shoulder into him and drops him down, and that'll end quarter number one. Appalachian State and Marshall. Successful first period here, Cliff, for Appalachian State against the number one team in the country. Well, they're doing everything they have to do. They've, they've gotten Scott the football both through the air and on the ground, and he's produced, and their defense is playing very well against this offense. So as we go away for a moment, we'll be right back to homecoming. Appalachian State and Marshall tied with a touchdown each. Southern Conference today. Sam Smith, Cliff Stout, and Mark Sw Matt Swarad joining you here from Boone, North Carolina at Appalachian State as Eric Kresser looks over his plays on the wrist. By the way, he's 7 of 9, 73 yards, but has been picked off once today by ASU. He's got a big third down play. They're 0 for 1 so far. Have a look to throw. Plenty of time. This one's intercepted by Brooks again. Second time of the afternoon at midfield. He's got an opening to the outside. Spins as he bounces off of one of his own men. And Brooks has set it up for his second intercept of the day. Brooks just laying back in a three-deep zone. Cresser stared at him, stared at uh, Ross the whole way. Brooks just laid in wait. It was a poor throw. Cresser threw it too far to the inside. And Brooks is there to make the pick. Here you see it. He's looking for Ross. Just throws it way too far to the inside. And Brooks... As I said, Cresser just stared down Ross the whole route. You know, he one knew of the, where he was going. One of the keys to those plays also was the fact that uh, actually Moss was held up by one of the linebackers coming off the line of scrimmage. And he didn't get where he was supposed to. Cresser thought he was going to be a little deeper, as you indicated. So the intercept puts ASU back in the ball game as Scott again will gain a yard over the line of scrimmage. Maintain that uh, success of the ball of running it for ASU into a tough teeth of the defense. And trying to spring something outside. Game plan. The wheels are turning on both sides. Good look at Bake Baker. Can you imagine what was going through his mind on his first start against number one Marshall today? I'll tell you what. He, he, you would think he'd be pretty nervous and come out here and have maybe a shaky start. But this kid looks poised. He's running the offense very, very well. Even earlier in the game, we're using the cadence to draw Marshall offside. He's doing everything that your veteran quarterback should do. His club was in big trouble last week down at Statesboro. He came back to rally him for the win, 35-28. to 28. This time they swing it out to the near side. They'll get a little bit of running room out to Adams. But he will not get enough as he is going to be knocked out. As a matter of fact, they'll lose it trying to bring it upfield. Good pursuit that time by the defense. And again, the linebacker Swafford. He is the one that comes up. He's the number two tackler with a couple of sacks already here for Appalachian State. Goins also is good support from the corner. One thing Baker's got to look at, you can't see it from this angle, but he was coming right at us. He threw this ball backwards. If, the if Adams doesn't make the catch, that's a lateral. So he's got to make sure if he's throwing that swing pass that he gets his full five-step drop, so he's throwing a forward pass just in case he does miss. Can you imagine what was going through Adams' mind when he looked up and there were four Marshall players and not many blockers with him? Baker back to throw. Steps out of the pocket. He's got some running room. 
And he'll gain back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe one more. And on the third down play, they'll be forced to give the football up again. As again, a very long field goal try would be out of the question, I believe. And they will kick the ball away, and Gwynn comes trotting on. Baker will have a chance to go to the sideline and discuss what went on and what went wrong. Another heads-up play by Baker there. The, the middle opened up. He didn't have enough room to pick up a first down, but he could get 10 or 12 of it back. And then uh, the, they can punt and make Marshall go maybe 90, 95 yards with this. So it was a good heads-up play. Martin probably won't get much of a look at this one. This will be one that will not help uh, Gwynn's average. He'll try to just pooch it somewhere. Not inside the 10. He's going to angle. Well, he just kicks it straight in the air. If this takes a decent hop, It'll be Marshall's ball. They'll get it out to the 20-yard uh, line. As again, it'll skip in and out of the back of the end zone. And they were there, but again, the ball took such a high hop. And it'll be brought out for the first and 10. So Marshall with an opportunity. And again, a flag flew just as the ball went in the end zone. And we'll see what the officiating core has to say about it. Great setting here at Boone. You can see those beautiful trees in the background. It kind of sets in a little small valley here in Boone. And when it's homecoming, this is a festive time in the month of October. Well, it's a beautiful place to be this time of year. In fact, flying in here from Las Vegas to do the game, it's impossible to get a room around That's this true. area just because <laughs> the leaves are changing. It's a hot spot this time of year, this part of the country. It really is gorgeous up here. By the way, how was your room in Pittsburgh last night? Was it good? <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what the markup's going to be here. It'll be against Marshall, and they'll bring it out to the 10-yard line. So apparently infraction going on as... We'll see what they have called here. There's Mr. Bender. He'll give us the official call here in a moment. Again, there was a, a call a for a fair catch. Blocking by. And again, an interference on the catch, apparently. Are some pushed on trying for it. So it's going to be coming up with a 10 yard penalty against Marshall. They'll get it. And now they step it back where? I think what happened, the reason it's an illegal block, Martin signaled for the fair catch. And then a block. And then blocked someone. Gotcha. You can't do that. If you're if you're not fair game game to be hit, I guess you can't hit anyone else. So again, the ball will be spotted just inside the five. And that's where Marshall will take over. They'll have it first and ten. And now their offense, as they did a few moments ago, going 80 yards, will have another one of those tough chores to go the length of the football against Appalachian State. By the way, both these teams will be in action next week. We'll talk about their schedule and more as we come back for homecoming. Appalachian State tallying with the number one team in all of the country in one double-A Marshall. We're not at seven. Well, a good look at some of the Marshall followers who have come here from Huntington, West Virginia to support their number one team. And they, by the way, will host the one double-A championship team and the championship game for the final time this year. They, of course, are moving on to the Mid-American Conference. And it'll be moving on to UT Chattanooga, where they'll be hosting for the first time in 1997 the championship game. That, by the way, will be the site of Appalachian State's next game at Old Chamberlain Field against Chattanooga. Well, I have Marshall will be at home against the Citadel. That'll be next week in the Southern Conference. First and 10 for Marshall. Shadow their own end zone as they try to work some running room. Out across the line of scrimmage with a gain of only a yard or two. As they have to try to push it out, and again, Thomas on the carry will gain only a yard. Second down, about nine. Hatcher right in the middle. Right tackle making the stop for ASU. I think it was my old alma mater, Youngstown State, that scared Marshall off to the Mid-America Conference. Probably Get did out that, of that one yeah, double A thing. That's probably right. Well, they had some uh, great games with those two. Three years in a row in the championship game. Youngstown's fallen on hard times since then, and Marshall just continues their role. Well, they're trying to roll with a little swing to the outside. That's Wicks making the catch. And Mark Wicks out of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, makes the catch and takes it out of bounds. And that'll move the chains for... Marshall and you know you get the feeling here clip when you have a team with a proficiency that they have on that sideline for Marshall that you get yourself on a hole and this kind of play gets you right back out of it with confidence I think that's a perfect word they're playing with a lot of confidence and that this is what Cresser does best he just always gets to the right guy and he puts the ball in the money interesting story on Cresser will share in a moment here as he calls his first down play he gets bumped and knocked down, and a big rush coming hard that time with the linebacker Marvin Hodge. We told you he'd slip into that backfield time to time. And Cresser, I don't think you ever saw him coming and just rammed him down just as he made the turn. Nice play by Hodge. Uh, Hodge just came in. Uh, Cresser didn't feel the pressure, and all he really had to do was give him a forearm shiver. Cresser, I think, was a little shocked that he was there. <laughs> Wasn't much of a hit, but... Uh, Come on, quarterbacks. you got to take more of a hit like that. By the way, that was the officially three and a half sacks now for Hodge, tying he with 
Avery, the down lineman for the Sacks lead for this club. And it's a second down and 18 yards to go for Marshall now. Confident shaken for the moment, and Cressers dropped again at the one yard line. And ASU's defense has really risen to the occasion. Uh oh, Avery got the uh, sense that he was being closed in by Hodge on the sack lead, so he comes up and gets one of his own. Well, I tell you what, two plays in a row, tremendous pass rush scheme that they must have had to free up, free up a rusher when you're not blitzing. Here you see Cresser, Avery comes right up the middle. Tremendous pass rush and uh, tremendous defensive effort so far by Appalachian State. They're just uh, taking the game to Marshall. And boy, if they take Cresser out of the game, then uh, they've done a pretty good job. By the way, there was a procedure penalty called on Marshall that obviously will be denied by ASU. And now we'll bring up a third down and 27 yards needed by Marshall. I guess we put a little jinx on him talking about the confidence because yeah. ASU has kind of snuck that right away from him. I'm thinking right now he doesn't feel too confident. Right. <laughs> I'm sure he had a couple of words to his down lineman here as he stepped into that huddle. Third down play, the crowd into it here. Martin in motion, comes to a halt. Thomas trying to gain some. Now Presser swings it out to Martin. Nifty little play. Martin trying to find some running room. He's going to run a lot. He's got a lot of field over there. Martin on the run, and it had not been for a sensational play by Fenderson, number 28. That one could have been six points all over it. Interesting play in the end zone for Marshall. It was, a heck of a, it was a heck of a design play. You see, you go back, you have your quarterback slip, mm -hmm. then he turns and throws the flare out to the left. Your, your receiver then breaks three tackles in the end zone, reverses his field all the way, Whoa. and you got yourself a nice play. Oh, Just the way they draw it up. And he ran about 80 yards on this one play. A lot of that east-west, though. And Fenderson, the last man that had a chance to bang him out of bounds, and did he ever. But a nice play by Marshall, and again, the confidence comes back into their offense with it. One big play that gets him a first down. Third and 27, and they sprung the magic. 10.36 before halftime. Thomas, again, you see the slippery turf, new as it may be here at Appalachian State. Not good footing, and Thomas slides to a stalk. At about the uh, 31, they'll spot it down. Boy, talk about blowing a great opportunity right there. App State has them backed up third and 27 on their own one-yard line. You figure they're going to get the ball inside the 50 easy. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. That microphone looked good coming out of here. A little uh, technical adjustment going on here. <laughs> Bob Pruitt on the sideline looking on, and I'm not sure if he's going to design that play to run again, but nonetheless, they try that middle of that line with Thomas again. And now just as we say, I guess, in the old biz, getting back to basics here for Marshall. Well, the two sacks, I'm sure, didn't make them very happy. And then they have a fluke play to get them out here. Now they say, OK, O-line, let's get back to it. You made a few mistakes. We'll run it right down their throat for a few plays. A rather big play for both of these teams. It's a third down and four for ASU that, of course, defensively had really stymied Marshall there. Marshall getting their game a little bit back in gear again. And they, of course, are trying to go for their first down. Marshall, you see, over 100 yards so far in passing. 47 so far for ASU. And Presser is going to throw. Swings it out to Moss. He'll make the catch right at the stake, or at least the distance to move the chain at the 40-yard line. And if it is at the 40, that'll be a first down, and they're going to gain about five. And there's another good look at Randy Moss. Eight consecutive games with a touchdown pass. He has the only score of the day for Marshall. It is a first down. They'll move the chains at the 40-yard line. ASU's defense, rather interesting. It's normally you have one guy turning and looking at the sideline. Literally all 11 guys turn to the sideline and get the defensive call. Normally a middle linebacker or such, and they are crammed in on the line of scrimmage. Now the linebacker's back out. Presser looking to throw. Swings it up, knocked out again this time. Payne jumping up and denying a catch by Martin. And Chuck Payne makes a great play of that one out of Hampton, uh, Virginia. Oh, that one could have been in the hands of uh, Martin with a little bit of running room on the sideline. Chuck Payne will be dreaming about that one tonight in his sleep. I mean, it's just a perfect interception. Try terrible, terrible decision by Cresser to try to lob that ball over his head. You're better off just throwing it away. But I guess if you believe in your arm, you try to make every throw you can. Guess who was lurking in the wings? Brooks waiting for that ball to be tipped. He's already got two intercepts, one on a tip and another a good clean one. Second down, 10 for Marshall. A pitch to Chapman. Gets a fortuitous bounce, but he's going to be dropped at the 35. And X 
excellent play by who else? The defensive player of the year last year, Dexter Coakley. He's been rather quiet. They've been double teaming him as much as they can when he gets inside the line of scrimmage. Number one tackler makes a big play here. Well, he's got good speed, pursues well, and he's got such great strength. Look at that. He just gets a couple hands on him. It's enough to knock him off balance and, and fall down. I, I tell you what, again, we we compared him to uh, Sam Mills before the game. I've played against Sam Mills. I mean, he brings it. He's five. He might be five nine, but he is. You know, how many times he's been in the Pro Bowl? This kid can play. This Coakley. Well, Defensive Player of the Year two years in a row, and the athlete of the conference last year. And he's coming again as Cresser's back to throw. Pretty good protection this time over the middle to Martin. Martin has for a little bit of a consultation with the officials after the throw as he and Payne tangled up. And Cresser was expecting. Martin to be a little bit opener and he didn't get upfield enough and now the fans for Appalachian State applaud the defense as they come off. And it'll be punt time for Marshall again. Adams will wait for this kick. It'll come off the toe of Marshall and it'll be Chris Hansen. He'll hit this about his own 25. And he gets a towering kick out of there. Wow. Adams wants no part of that one. Takes a little skid right at the five yard line and had the man that was running up field been able to see where it was going to stop. That was going to be Larry Moore. He went to the outside. The ball came to the inside. They could have easily downed that one again well inside the five yard line. What a kick by Hanson. What a tremendous kick. That thing was so high. Perfect spiral. Turned it over. Well, as the crowd looks on, ASU gets the ball at the 20 yard line. And with a 7-7 game at 8-12 before halftime. Well, Chris Hansen is a little bit upset because he thought he had one in Coffin's corner inside the five. This is Larry Morse. He didn't know where the ball was. He had his head up looking at the ball. That could have been down inside the five. And Hansen, I guess when you uh, think you've got the job done and you don't get it done, oh, shucks. <laughs> well, I don't think there's a, there's a receiver or a guy like Larry Moore in the country that expects the ball to be kicked six, 75 yards in the air. <laughs> he thought he overran it by 15 yards. Well, we made mention at the start of the game, the kicking game with a wet turf could play a big role, and certainly it has this afternoon with both of the guys doing a good job. Back is Baker. Pumps once. He's throwing deep. Trying to get it out here to Burton. He's got it at the 40. Down to the 35-yard line. As again, an excellent thrown ball to Kevin Burton out of Columbia, South Carolina. Makes his 12th catch of the year, and he gets a huge gain from the 20 all the way down to the 36-yard line where they finally put him down. Baker continues to look sharp. There's nothing pretty about it. It's just a straight takeoff, and he throws the ball perfectly. Sets up, good five-step drop, cock aim, fire, puts the ball right on the money. That was against uh, Goins, who was shaken up early in the game, but just a well-executed play and a nice throw. Appalachian State with 7.54 left to go for the half. Tied at 7. They pitch it to Adams. Adams running out of uh, Scott's tailback roll. Will gain the line of scrimmage and no more. Swafford, one of the linebackers, along with McLeod and Emery, roaming about five yards behind the line of scrimmage and supporting well. As Adams looks, talking to some of his linemen. And that's a great deal of chemistry as well, Cliff, and the fact that a lineman knows his man that he's kind of watched him on film. He knows which way he can normally take him. And a back, of course, may not have worked. Certainly here, Adams coming in for Scott, and a little communication needed there. Second down, 10 yards to go. You're exactly right. The offensive line, they, they get a feel for the, who's behind them, and they get a guy leaning one way. It may not be the design, but they know what the guy behind them is going to do. Well, Baker, something didn't go right. Don't believe that was a design play as Baker just dives in the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up a third down play. Well, I think they're trying to just run a quarterback draw, which never developed. Uh, Marshall running a, a game up in the middle and nothing, a hole didn't open up for uh, the quarterback to step forward, Baker, and take advantage of it. So he just tried to dive back to the line of scrimmage and uh, let's see what we can do on third down. Baker, by the way, is six of eight passes for 91 yards so far. And again, you see him just trying to get enough yardage here to keep him off his back as the defensive line really collapsed. And that was Ricky Hall, number six, making the stop. Here's a bad snap. Back is going to be Baker, who made probably the wisest move he could do and just simply covering it back. And I think the center of this time, McQuitt, actually snapped the football before Baker was actually ready for it. It went right by him. He was fortunate to get a hold of the football, and at least Appalachian State will be able to kick it away. 
Yep, that's exactly what happened. Baker was looking out to the left. Either the center, you know, everybody else went on time. I hate to blame it on quarterbacks, but <laughs> everybody else went when the ball was snapped, and Baker was uh, still looking left, calling the signal. So it's tough to tell. They'll have a discussion over there. They'll point fingers for a minute, and then they'll straighten it out. By the way, the center was Cutlub, so an outstanding uh, center here for Appalachian State, but a bad mistake there. Excellent punt by Gwen. This is Martin inside his own 10, out to the 12, and that's all. Special teams, good coverage here by Appalachian State. Kendrick Hall, a wide receiver out of Athens, Georgia, down on the coverage for ASU. And Gwen gets himself a nice kick, and the kicking games continue to be a vital part of this game this afternoon. So with only 5.42 left to go before halftime, Marshall, if they hope to have a lead by the half, have got to do it now. Well, it's all not at 7-7. We mentioned at the start of the show a great classic matchup, this, depending on which side of the field you sit on. Marshall came in, number one in the country. Appalachian State had lost three games, a little luster off of the bloom here, but it is another one of those classic matchups as we've got the knotted tie right now on a beautiful afternoon despite a little dampness here in Boone, North Carolina. And now Eric Kresser and his company have to come to the attack, and they'll do it for their own 12-yard line just before the halftime break. Offensive yardage pretty well even right now. 137 for Marshall, 127 for ASU as they swing it to Martin. Good hands at the 20. And is chased out of bounds by Coakley. And they'll get it out to about two yards shy of enough for a first down. No, they do get the first down as they moved it. Let's head downstairs. A special guest with Matt Swearhead. Thanks, Sam. Standing with me here at homecoming, one of the more popular guys on campus right now, the new head basketball coach, Buzz Peterson. And Buzz, you're from Asheville, a native of Asheville. Back here at ASU, you began your career as an assistant. It must be very special. Very excited. Uh, just so tickled Mount Carolina. And it's been a, been a, I've been glad in 87. See, who's in nine years. One thing a lot of folks probably don't know is that Buzz was the North Carolina High School Player of the Year in high school as a senior. He beat out Michael Jordan. Michael ended up being your college roommate at North Carolina. When you got this job, what did he say to you as some uh, things to look at and some suggestions? It's always something we've always talked about. If Mike got a chance to be a head coach to help the program out, and he's done that with uh, some Nike uh, deals with us and with Gatorade and with Wilson also. Taking over here at ASU, they're part of the Southern Conference, and the Southern Conference very, very proud to have their conference tournament now in Greensboro at the Greensboro Coliseum. I know you're excited about that, a great recruiting tool. Oh, it is great. Great town, great tournament. I'm looking forward to it my first year, and we, with a lot of alumni from, uh, from ASU, hope to get those people out. Well, Buzz, thanks a lot. Best of luck to you, and uh, enjoy the game. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Let's go back. Big play by Dexter Coakley after Kresser had tried to hit on a long pass, broken up by Johnson. Coakley comes in, and I believe that's the third sack of the day on Kresser as he goes down in a heap. And Kresser again turning and looking to see where this big fella's coming from. Well, he was coming from the outside, and he came quick. Coakley with a big pass rush. No, somebody's got to pick him up. When there's only six guys rushing, somebody missed their block right here. There, There's the guy. Chapman didn't pick him up as he tried to make the move. And now a third down, 16 yards needed for Marshall. 4.50 to go before halftime. Kresser looks to throw in a crowd just over the outstretched hands of the receiver and defensive back Johnson as they were trying to get it upfield and trying to get it in the hands of Moss. Excuse me, it was a cold claw trying to get a hold of it, but the defense again rises to the occasion for ASU, and Marshall has to regroup again and punt the ball away. Next time cold claw comes across the middle, he's going to be looking for Gordon Fenderson. Fenderson just laid him out as the ball sailed over his head, and he took his eyes off, or took his mind off where he was, let his guard down, and he got ripped. Adams will try to return this left-footed uh, kick by Hanson, who hangs another beauty. And it's 27. Oh! And it's going to be a face mask as he's brought down from behind special teams player Larry Moore. And it was obvious to see that one with uh, once again Adams going one way and unfortunately his head going the other. <laughs> and the penalty will be called on Marshall 15 yards after the uh, tackle. And they'll bring it out for an excellent field position for ASU before halftime. With the 15-yard penalty and four and a half minutes left, plenty of time. There's no reason for Baker or the, or the Mountaineer offense to get anxious here. They've got plenty of time to drive it downfield, just go stick with their normal offense. By the way, Cliff, that tackle by Coakley was his official 600 tackle of his career. First He's got six so far to sack today. 
And again, the all-time tackle leader in the history of the Southern Conference, and that's not the way you want to tackle, as Thomas got the face mask and the helmet and probably his nose on the way by. That, that, that's dangerous right there. I'll tell you what. The good thing the turf's a little bit slippery and his feet just kind of slid out from under him, or that could have been even worse. So Appalachian State's offense under the direction of a junior quarterback making his first start, Bake Baker. We'll have a first and 10 to go after the mark out to the 38-yard line. Scott again just kind of feeling that hole and is met by a host including Avery and the linebacking core. May have gained about three yards in the play. They move it. Looks as if it might be beyond the 40-yard line. It is out to the 42. Gain of four on the play. And it'll be second down and about uh, six yards to go here for Appalachian State with 4-11. Plenty of time before the halftime break. I really like Damon Scott's running style. I mean, he just slowly kind of picked his hole. The play didn't look like anything, and they pick up four yards. Scott came into the game with 902 yards rushing. And was only 40-something uh, shy of 1,000. As here's a throw over the middle. It's going to be completed and then dropped. That time it was Volmer. Jeff Volmer, the tight end, battling back with a defensive back. That was Scott Smythe. And Volmer almost came up with it. 6 to 246, a big target to throw to, but he couldn't hang on to that one. Smythe had good coverage on Volmer going down the middle there. And Volmer actually kind of got tangled up with him as he tried to slip inside on the, po on the thin post route and didn't get his head around in time, but did get it around just in time to make sure that uh, Smythe couldn't make the interception and smack the ball down. By the way, ASU and Marshall both have done a good job of recruiting out of the state of Florida. One of those is Volmer out of Longboat Key down in the Florida Keys. And coming to Appalachian State to play ball as Baker's back to throw another third down. This time he throws underneath and Volmer, who couldn't catch the last one, does this one and takes it down inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. And what a nice call. Volmer drops one after getting some good coverage. He comes right back to him, and he makes a big catch. Volmer had made a good adjustment. He originally ran about a seven-yard out. Nothing was there. And you, you watch Baker. He just stands there waiting and waiting and waiting. Ends up getting crushed by Cohen after he throws. But Volmer made an adjustment, saw that he wasn't open, knew Baker was in trouble, slipped to the inside and ran away from the defender. Baker takes pretty good hit there from Cohen. Swafford, by the way, the man that finally made the stop out of the shotgun is Baker. First down and 10 for Appalachian State. Underneath the Smith. Bangs off of one tackle with a 30. Otis laying some leather out there. I'll tell, I'll tell you, you what. what. Otis weighing 169 pounds, and you don't think he's fired up? Boy, I'll tell you what. He sidestepped one guy and then lowered his shoulder and just drove a defender right on his rear. Good throw by Baker. They send everybody deep, release Smith. That's the same route he dropped a pass on earlier. Let's see who he gets. Ooh, number 11. He's going to remember Otis. Who is that number That's 11? Larry Moore. That's a special teams man that's been playing a little bit in that secondary. That, by the way, was on their nickel back situation. Here they try Scott. Scott is drugged down from behind by B.J. Cohen out of Conley, Georgia. The defensive right end. Their third leading tackler came in with over a half a century mark on the tackles and seems like he's been there a long time and he's still got another year to go. He's a junior. That's just how well he's played in that defensive line for Marshall. It's a nice looking drive so far. Baker's numbers. He's at eight of it. Seems like he's thrown more than 11 passes. Yeah. He's eight of 11, 119 yards. And really hasn't he hasn't made a mistake. He's looking really sharp out there. Scott, by the way, 11 carries for 57 yards. He's the lone running back behind Baker. And they swing it to the near side, and another catch is made as they'll take this one out of bounds, and they slowly but surely try to move the chains, but not a lot of yardage there. Catch made by ASU, and that's going to be Adams coming out of the backfield. Excuse me, it's going to be Everett coming out of the backfield. Excuse me. Third and two, Mountaineers using one of their timeouts, so they want to make sure they get a good call here. There's a minute 54. He was tackled and thrown out of bounds, but the official gave him, called the forward progress and kept the clock moving. So they decided to take the timeout, make sure they call the right play. They don't want to blow this drive. They'd like to get six or seven out of it. Let me correct that is Adams at a number 18 on two spots on our spotter board here, but it was Adams who made the catch in the ASU. And Marshall have a chance to talk it over here right now. That, by the way, the man talking 
Right in front was a Melvin Cunningham, a senior from Red Jacket, West Virginia. Number 25, couple of intercepts. And this is a guy, in, in talking to some of the scouts, in addition to some of the other great backs, this guy could be a real good one in the NFL. Again, at 5'10", may be a little drawback, but excellent coverage, and they refuse the other team to throw in his direction, which is a good sign he's a good one. Well, if you can cover, they don't care in the NFL how tall you are. You know, 5'10's not that small. Yeah, there's a lot of little receivers, too. He's going to have some mismatches, but if you can cover, you can run. And, you know, he's a pretty strong kid, too, 190 pounds. He can... He can uh, come up and hit and stick you pretty good too. And you know the nice thing about it is the fact that when you are as successful as Marshall being able to go through the playoffs and all the way into the finals as many years as they have you get various looks of offenses you don't just have to look at a Southern Conference offense which is very innovative but again you get it from all over the country and he's able to improve his game and I think that's what he's done with the playoffs. He, yeah he's yeah he gets to play 14 games a year rather than just 10 or 11 someplace else. And that's one of the advantages of being in Division One. But uh, he's played against some good competition, and he, he's just improved every year. And he's had the scouts looking at him for quite a while. Some other rather interesting scores around the country coming up later. Georgia Southern at the Citadel in the second half of our Southern Conference yeah, double hitter today. Yeah, yeah. Avon Scott trying for enough for the first down, and he does have it. As again, Appalachian State keeping their drive alive. A minute 49. The clock becoming a little a factor. Scott Smythe, the free safety up on the line of scrimmage to make the stop on the secondary. As Appalachian State moves the chains, this time they have it at the 17-yard line and a chance to take the lead before half of this drive comes to an end in the end zone. Scott, the long running back. Burton split to the right, Smith to the left. And Baker's throwing to Smith. And knocked out of bounds inside the 10 around the seven and a half yard line. And I tell you what about these wide receivers and there's a good uh, example. Melvin Cunningham gave him a little bit too much room and Smith made a little juke move to the inside and caught him on the little out. Now watch Otis turn up into Cunningham. He's feeling pretty good because he ran over Larry Moore a minute ago. He can't do the same thing to Cunningham. Cunningham stuck in well they kind of danced out of bounds. Kind of looks like ballroom dancing tackling. <laughs> Nonetheless, whatever it is, nice. it's a first down, and it's goal to goal now as Bob Pruitt looks on for Marshall. Only undefeated first-year coach left for his first year in uh, Division I or 1AA. And Appalachian State would love to end that today. Marshall needs this game to maintain their number one ranking. Baker out of the shotgun. Time to throw. It's knocked down at the goal line, and jumping up was Maxwell to knock that one away, intended in the back of the end zone that time as they try to go to the tight end, Volmer. Baker Burton made was his, also there. Baker made his first mistake of the day and got away with it. Threw it right in Maxwell's hands. You know, he, he, he was trying to get on the left side. I think it was uh, Martin, or not Martin, but uh, trying to throw the fade. That wasn't there. He came back into the middle, really didn't take a good look, and threw it right in Maxwell's hands. Smith was a man he was looking for Smith, first. Yeah. And then Burton and then Volmer. So he actually had some good patterns with the exception of one thing. He had Volmer right at the goal line and Burton behind him about two yards. No separation. Second down, goal to go. Baker in the end zone again. Scott off his shoulder, incomplete. And as Baker got that one away, he got quite a shot right up the middle. Maxwell was back defending again, but that pass was a little behind Scott simply because of the reason Baker got a big charge. Well, Baker gets stuck right as he throws it, but this is a pretty darn good throw. Scott's got to hang on to it. It was just a tad behind him. But he's got to make that catch. Right there's 14-7. I think he just didn't see the ball till the very last second. Emory, the linebacker, was a man who was putting the pressure on from Winchester, Kentucky. Proud on their feet, supporting ASU with a third down and go. Baker's got big trouble trying to run away from it. Tries to dive to the goal line and will not make it. And again, coming up is a fine tackle by Maxwell. And now it's fourth down and goal to go. And Baker has been shaken up. He really took a shot, struggling to get to his feet here. Gerard Hardy, of course, is the man that started the year. Baker replaced him last week at Georgia Southern. Baker, nice job. Nobody's open. He's got some running room, but it's tough to jump over Maxwell from the four-yard line. <laughs> it was indeed. <laughs> Goins was the man that was there as well. Appalachian State stringing out their offense, and I believe they are going to go for a field goal in this situation. With 36 seconds left to go in the half. Well, they'll probably let the clock run down as far as they can. They may even take the penalty, back it up a little bit, and have a better angle. 
than Jay. where they're at right now on the left hash just at the two yard line. Jay Sutton, great success here at Appalachian State as a kicker for this club. And again, they will finally stop the clock with 25 seconds left to go in the first half of the game. If they get this or if they don't get this, I would imagine that Jerry Moore has to be somewhat pleased as he walks into the locker room. True, they've had some opportunities they haven't taken advantage of. Bob Pruitt on the other side, their offense, that 80-yard drive looked very impressive, but otherwise, Appalachian State has taken it away from them here. They really have. They've controlled the football game. They've got to feel good with any kind of lead here. Uh, you, you take a team that's outscored their opponents by over 100 points in the first half of the game, and you can go into the locker room ahead of them 10-7. Now they're going to have the mindset, hey, we've beat them five out of the last seven years. Why can't we do it again? So here's the snap. Gwynn puts it down. Sutton has the kick up, and the kick is good. Well, wait a minute. There's a flag down. Now, this might make it interesting for the coach. What do you do now? It was a fourth and goal to go at the two. Jerry Moore and Appalachian State elected to kick it for the field goal. But it's, it's tough to take the points off the board. Then again, it's awful tempting. Ooh, penalty on uh, App State. So a sizable penalty here against Appalachian State. Sutton says, I like the uh, different angle, but uh, let's not get carried <laughs> away, fellas. So again, Appalachian State uh, problem. Dead ball. As ball they take start. it and they get a motion the penalty, offense. so they'll do. We'll back it Still up. And now down. Sutton will have the angle from about the nine, a 19-yard field goal. Bob Pruitt anxiously looking on from the sideline as Marshall again. We'll be at home against the Citadel. They'll go to East Tennessee State, which could be one of the games of the year, November the 9th. And we'll close out at home against Furman, which, if they could get by East Tennessee State, would truly be one of the top games. Sutton's 8 or 9 this year. His only miss was from 40. But they, they get a little bit harder when you just missed one and you got to kick it again to get the three points. 7-7 seven, seven game. Marshall coming up. It's oh, blocked. my. And it is blocked and out of the back of the end zone. It'll be brought out to the 20. And let's see, did Marshall get off sides? I think somebody jumped, and there is a flag down. I think you've got the outside guy here on the left on the rush in the neutral zone. And they're going to get another shot. Sutton's kicked the ball four times now. He's only got one point. <laughs> <laughs> He's going, hmm. He's saying, well, I didn't do very well at that angle. Let me get back in a little closer again. And again, it was motion or encroachment by the defense. As again, they jump offside as Marshall as the ball is snapped. And Mr. Outside. Harold Bender, his crew is on the day fan. Been rather active here this Five afternoon. Remember, we made mention of the first period, down. not a lot after about the first penalty, and now there's been several. Look at the top of the screen here. There's there the man is. in the neutral zone. So this could affect the officials playing the second half. They keep dropping that flag. It's going to get wet and heavy and slow them down. They can't cover the field. That's probably a good point. Bill Lyon, by the way, 6'5", 290 from a defensive tackle is the man that got that block. But it goes for naught, and here goes Jay Sutton again. Got to be tired. Kicker got to be in shape. They almost got that one, but they don't, and it is a field goal that is good. So with the clock stopped with only six seconds left to go, actually the clock is still running. They will have to put six or seven seconds up on the extra point, and they will be kicking off here as the clock totally wound down. But nonetheless, Appalachian State gets the field goal from Sutton, and they'll be kicking off. And again, they'll have to get this squared away as the official Harold Bender coming running out to midfield to make sure he got this right. So they put eight seconds back on the clock. So it took uh, 17 seconds to kick that field goal. It took a while. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> three tries, ran a lot of time off the clock. Now we were talking about happiness of Jerry Moore going into the locker room again with a 7-7 tie. Even more ecstatic. Maybe a little disappointed they didn't get six out of that drive, but at least you got the lead going in against number one Marshall. Adjustments on both sides will be very interesting in the third period. How much does Marshall come out and try to throw the ball a little more? And how it does Appalachian State on their offense? Does Baker get a little better protection? Does he throw a little more? We all find out on that third period. It'll be interesting today. Well, I think I think App State will stick with what they've got going. They've been mixing it up pretty good. Um, Scott's got uh, 12 rushes for 60 yards with the 28-yard touchdown runs. Baker's 10 for 15, 137 yards. There's the drive, 12 plays, 58 yards, and the field goal. They used up almost all the time. That was a Kenny Stabler-like drive. Not only drive the ball the length of the field in the allotted amount of time, but leave the other team with no time at all to do anything in response. Randy Moss is the man to try to keep it away from, but then you got to kick it to Martin. I don't know which one of those guys you'd want to kick to. Neither one of them, preferably. 
I'll tell you what, if I had a freshman like Moss, he wouldn't be returning kicks. It is Martin in the end zone. He's going to bring it out. At the 15, and he's taken down rather abruptly. As that time, Appalachian State's coverage gets down. Number 22, the first reaching Mike Jones, just a freshman out of Blountville, Tennessee. Number 22 is the man that made the first stop and then got some help from his friends. Right in behind him was Chuck Payne, one of the safety men. And another flag. Yellow is a popular color up here. Soggier as they drop it, there too. There you go. It is going to be against Appalachian State. So Marshall will have uh, the ball at the 22-yard line, only five seconds. And Defense. not sure Cresser can throw it this far or if he'll even attempt that, but we'll find out. Well, again, if you've, if you've got Randy Ross, you try it. I mean, and Martin on it's the other worth side. the effort. But I'll tell you what, what do you think? If you've got a, a freshman like Randy Ross, 6'5", 210 pounds, would you have him back there returning kicks? <laughs> I mean, he's, he could get cut in half. Randy, Randy Moss. Well, I knee it down, and that'll do it. As again, the game at the end of the first half belongs to Appalachian State and their homecoming crowd. Certainly enjoys what they've seen today for the Mountaineers. For the thundering herd of Marshall, again down by three, head for the locker room to make their adjustments. And we'll be heading down to the field to get the assessment from the coaches here during our halftime break. Don't go away. We have the facts, the figures, and the highlights of this first half of the game on what went on today. Appalachian State coming in. Shirley's an underdog, but now they've got the lead. Downstairs, here's Matt Swearad. I'm with Coach Bob Pruitt of Marshall. Coach, what a tremendous rival this has been going back the years. You're finishing it out today at defensive struggle. Always, uh, always defense in this game. Well, you know, we keep shooting ourselves in the foot on offense. I, our guys, I guess, are a little nervous over the big game or whatever, but uh, hopefully we can come out. I think that uh, if we'll quit uh, making some of these mental errors, we'll be able to move the football. But defense has played pretty good on both sides of the ball, so we just have to come out and see what we can do this next half. Okay, go get them. Thanks a lot. Back up to Sam. Thank you, Matt. And we're delighted you joined us today on Southern Conference Football. Don't forget a second half of our doubleheader. Coming up later this afternoon, Georgia Southern at the Citadel. Right now, Appalachian State has the lead by three and a half. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Kid Brewer Stadium here in Boone. Matt Swarad joined now by the Chancellor of Appalachian State University, Dr. Frank Burkowski. A beautiful day, homecoming, and the Mountaineers leading by three at halftime, 10 to 7. What a great day. It's a, it is a great day. It's an exciting day, but we play our best uh, game in, in the rain. So I was happy to see it come. So many exciting things happening here on campus these days here in Boone. Talk a little bit about the renovations going on at Appalachian State. Well, we're at a very uh, important time in the evolution of the university. We've got about $120 million in construction going on, which we desperately needed. We've got a math science building. We'll be breaking ground on a new convocation center in March, a student uh, support building. It's just a great time in the construction business here. Well, you know what? Uh stranger to change and getting things going. When you were down at South Florida as the chancellor at USF, you were instrumental in bringing major college football to a team that, a school that never had it. And now you're doing things here in Boone, all these new buildings that are going up in the Convocation Center. That'll be the jewel of the campus. I think it will. I think it's going to be a major regional facility that'll bring a lot of attention to Boone and to the uh, university. Now, Boone, a lot of folks don't know about the students up here. 71% of the student athletes at Appalachia State graduate. That's better than the student ratio of just everyday students that come here that's tremendous yeah we're really proud of the retention rate and the graduation rate of our athletes they come here and we expect them to get a degree they work hard and uh, we've got a great coaching staff that's committed to them and we're just very proud of the whole athletic program also getting a lot of recognition nationwide u.s news and world report just said that appalachian state is one of the top 15 buys in all of academics and universities that's right we've been in the top 15 now for the last four or five years we were ranked the second most efficient university in the southeast so those are good national rankings for us talk a little bit about what's happening now in the southern conference some changes because marshall of course the last meeting here they'll be going out of the mid-american conference but some new members coming in unc greensboro and wofford we're really happy to have wofford and greensboro and the college of charleston with us they're going to bring a broader dimension to all of our to our athletic program men's and women's sports uh, Wofford, of course, has a tremendous athletic facility there. They've had excellent support, and there's so much change now in the conferences, so we're happy to have three new members, and they're all in the region. So I think we're going to have terrific fan support and a lot of traveling going back and forth among the campuses. Well, we've talked a lot about football. Of course, it's homecoming and football's here, but basketball started two weeks ago, and a new guy on campus, Buzz Peterson's your head coach. 
a lot of excitement around here for that too. Well, it should be. Buzz is a terrific coach. I think he's going to bring an exciting dimension to the basketball program. And with Linda Robinson as coach of our women's basketball program, she's just outstanding. We and we've won the Commissioner's Cup, at the Southern Conference Major Cup now the last two to three years. So we're real pleased with uh, what's happening there. Well, Dr. Burkowski, best of luck here at Appalachian State. Enjoy what's left of homecoming. Thank you, Matt, very much. Good being with you. Oh, it's been great. We'll be back with more here at halftime at Kid Brewer Stadium. The Mountaineers lead by three at the break. Welcome back to Boone. We're at halftime. Appalachian State stunning the number one team of the country. The Marshall Thundering Herd. The score is 10 to 7 Mountaineers. And joining me now here at homecoming, the head coach of the women's basketball team at Appalachian State, Linda Robinson. And I know you're enjoying the festivities today as well. A day off for your girls, I'm sure. Well, absolutely. We went hard this morning, had a good scrimmage. The first time we've been scrimmaging. And then to come out and have these two teams out here, fantastic day in Boone. Coming off a great season last year, 24 and 6, 17 and 0 in the Southern Conference. The first team ever to go undefeated in regular season play. You swept the tournament. That's that's tough to repeat on. And what are you thinking about this year? Well, I tell you what, we're really not even thinking about repeating that type of performance, but we are thinking about improving as a basketball club. Because last year we felt like at Appalachian we were able to take our program up a notch. So this year we want to continue that, build upon what we developed last year and over the last several years, and take our program to the next level up. And I think now with the competitive basketball in the Southern Conference, people are really pushing us this year. And we think this is a, a great time, the right time to move into the next level. Well, you got three of your leading scorers returning. A lot of uh, depth and a lot of experience. That's certainly going to help. Oh, it's fantastic. We have three, four key seniors back. We've got two players that I think could buy for player of the year in the Southern Conference. Andrea Hinton at post, who did a tremendous job last year. Melissa Davis, who, was, who played the four position for us, played a lot of post but was six in the country at three-point shooting. So having those two players back, along with Meredith Thompson and Lee Jones, four seniors with a lot of scoring, rebound punch, leadership, I think that they will really lead the way for us to see if we can improve upon what we did last year. Well, last year you won the Southern Conference Championship. You went down to the Greensboro Coliseum, a new venue for the Southern Conference Tournament. I know you love the experience and very happy about being in Greensboro. Oh, absolutely. I tell you, the Southern Conference and the Greensboro Coliseum folks put on one class tournament it is a fantastic situation we really hope to do the best we can to get down there in a good seed to try to repeat and try to do those things but what a class situation it is fantastic when you've got Southern Conference men's and women's basketball down there so good because you know and then we have wrestling at the same time so you've got all the fans there mingling doing things supporting one another it is one exciting situation in the Greensboro Coliseum they know how to put on a tournament they treated us like Queens it was a a kind of a storybook finish going in 17 and 0, but to be treated so well in such a first-class facility is is wonderful. Well, the building sits over 23,000 people. That's a great rec recruiting tool in itself. But how about now the new campus arena, do it 99, the Convocation Center that'll seat 10,000. Well, our players are psyched. Our freshmen will be playing in that facility their senior years, and that's a big factor. And we had four commitments that I can't really speak about right now, but four commitments early, and those young ladies know that they'll be playing in our facility on campus their junior year so it's a fantastic time here at Appalachian look around and see the building isn't it beautiful it look here in the stadium we have really got a jewel here in Boone North Carolina a lot of people don't realize it but I think more and more they are and and that's evidenced by our recruiting out of state now we have such a good talent in state but now people are really knowing the name and we're drawing from all over the country well coach thanks for taking the time to join us here at halftime and best of luck this year well, thank you very much Linda Roberts the head basketball coach of the Lady Mountaineers joining us here at halftime at the break. The Mountaineers lead by three. Each game, the first part of our doubleheader, Georgia Southern and Citadel coming up a little later here on Sports South. Right now, Appalachian State at homecoming has a three-point lead over the number one team in the country, Appalachian State over Marshall 10 to 7. Sam Smith along with Cliff Stout along with Matt Swera down on the uh, stadium floor as you can see us high above here at uh, Kid Brewer Stadium. Glad you could join us for football. You know we talked early in the game turnovers avoided by Appalachian State may be a key. The one turnover that Marshall has had uh, two interceptions but one of their turnovers resulting in a touchdown that's been one of the keys to the game today. Well it really has. Uh, App State was the team we were worried about with the turnovers. They had 15 coming into today but they've uh, held on to the football and they've been very efficient. The other thing we talked about Marshall's 
had a balanced attack like we thought. They have got 129 yards rushing, 143 passing, which is about what they've done uh, on average all year long. But they have the two turnovers that's hurt two drives. And, and App State's kept them from getting the big, big play. You know, they've had kind of a bend but don't break defense so far today. And there was some concern as we looked on from high above over how Bake Baker would handle the pressure. <laughs> and you'd have to give him a pretty good grade so far through the first half. I I'm impressed with everything he's done. And mentally, he's been right into the game. Almost made one big mistake there at the end when he threw the ball right into uh, Eric Chuck Payne's hands and almost got it picked off before the field goal there at the end. But it, he looks pretty good. 10 of 15, uh, 187 yards. He's looking pretty 137 yards. He's looking pretty good. Yeah, he's absolutely. got a lot of poise. He does not look like a kid that's starting his first game against the number one team in the country. Well, you'll be flying U.S. Air back to Las Vegas. Let's look at their keys <clears throat> that we looked at at the first of the game and kind of revisit there. Maintain your poise. Marshall looked like they had done that early, but I don't think they're as poised as the number one team. And let's look at the rest of them. Defensive line pressure on Baker. Defensive line pressure on Baker has been non-existent. He's been hit a couple times after he's thrown the football. One hurried throw, but that should have been a touchdown uh, late in the first half when uh, Damon Scott dropped a pass in the end zone, but uh, they haven't gotten the pressure on Baker. Uh, the secondary play Appalachian State's been outstanding. You know, they've got two young guys in there, but they, they've pretty much shut down Moss. He's got two receptions for 18 yards, or and that, that, that's normally, that's his average, 18.9 yards a catch. He's got the one touchdown catch and one hitch. That's all he's done in the entire first half. Martin's caught some passes, but uh, he really hasn't hurt him. He's been in the 8, 10, 12-yard variety. So, as you can see, the crowd has spilled out out of the stands and onto the grassy area here at Kid Burr Stadium <laughs> on homecoming as we get ready for the second half of the kickoff. Appalachian State hoping to make a good homecoming out of it to spoil number one Marshall. Welcome back to Boone here with me at halftime as head coach of Appalachian State, Jerry Moore, coach at club by three at the break. 30 minutes to go. What you tell you, fellas? Well, we just need to keep on doing what we're doing. Play hard, lots of intensity. Just, just go have fun. I'll go get them. Well, thank you. Back upstairs. Thank you very much, Matt. And, of course, keep on keeping what you're doing there as the Appalachian State Mountaineers come back out. And the crowd starts to settle back into their seat. You keep in mind that, of course, it will be Marshall having the football first of all. Let's take a look at some of our halftime uh, highlights. And we started off with the defense of Appalachian State University. Well, they get a good pass rush here. Presser steps out of the pocket, throws on the run, throws a pass a little bit high. Moss should have made the catch. And there's Brooks with his first of two interceptions. That set up the offense, and the offense was around Coakley, not only catching the ball, but running it. Well, Baker has, has shown that he can read a defense and get a nice touch on the ball. Here we are, a two-deep zone, and he finds uh, the running back right down the middle, Damon Scott, who makes a nice grab for about a 30-yard pickup. And here's Scott on the blitz. This is the touchdown run. You see number eight come into your camera there. That's Scott was his man in coverage, and he didn't get over there in time as they ran the quick trap up the middle, and Scott's gone for the touchdown. So after Appalachian State had taken the lead, Marshall comes storming back, and they got a little trick play, or at least a lucky play, to get out of the end zone here. Well, there was a lot of luck involved, but when you got the quickness of a guy like Martin, he can make things like that happen. And it was just a shame that they did that because they gave up great field position. Well, you throw to Martin, you come back with your bread and butter man, Randy Moss, his 12th touchdown catch of the year. Presser just throws a nice ball, and Moss shows what he does best. He uses that big body to shield off the defender and makes the grab. By the way, his 12 touchdowns, only four shy of a conference record hold by a Tony Brown, formerly of Marshall, looking at the first half stats. You indicated some good yardage there by Appalachian State, and 187 against Marshall lowly is a very good number. It really is. They're only giving up about 320 yards a game, 187 and a half. But the, I think the thing that stuck out there is over 18 and a half minutes of ball control. They're keeping Marshall's offense off the football field. And part of that's due to Marshall's mistakes. They're keeping themselves off the field with two interceptions. Well, you saw briefly 6-5 Randy Moss ready to return along with Martin. As Gwynn gets ready to kick off for Appalachian State, and we're underway here in the third period. A towering end over end draw a kick, and it'll be Moss in the end zone. We'll take nothing out of this one as he'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. So Gwynn has done his job not only punting the ball, but kicking off. That's two that he sent to into the end zone without coming out. One completely threw it. And now Marshall, first and 10 at their own 20. Their first touchdown came on an 80-yard drive. And it'll be interesting to see what uh, kind of strategy they'll come out with. Who they try to throw to? How much they use their running back, Thomas? Thomas did have some early yardage, uh, but then didn't get much near the end of the half. 
I'm surprised they did not use him more. I mean, here's a guy that's averaging nine yards carry coming into this football game, and I, they threw, they were a little heavy on the passing side compared to what they like to do, and guess what they do right off the bat? They go to Thomas, and a big stick by Brooks. Wow. L.J. Brooks out of Robbins, North Carolina, but what a run by Thomas. He, by the way, was replaced at the second period break by Chapman. Chapman did well, but Thomas does better here to start the third. Well, he's done well this year. 55 carries for 496 yards, nine yards a carry. He just reads his block. There's not really, there wasn't a hole blown out there. What they had done is drive the App State defensive line about five yards off the football. Scarborough, one of the big blockers up in front, was the one that sprung the big key block for him. As it's first and 10 for Marshall, they moved it out to their own 35. And here comes Chapman after Thomas gets a breather. And Chapman rolls right side for about seven more yards. So ground control, ball control by Marshall, the big key coming out here to start the third period and grind out what they hope to be another drive that could put them in the lead. Well, there's no reason for them to panic. Yes, they are down 10 to 7, but the, as versatile as they are, and as powerful as their offense is, they've got 30 minutes. They can score a heck of a lot more than three points to get back in this. Second down, they will need four yards. It was a gain of six on the play rather than seven. They faked the handoff and then do give it to Chapman. And Chapman through the line of scrimmage in that same hole that Thomas found wide open. Is there again, and he rumbles into ASU territory. Ferguson and Webb opening a hole up in front of him. First and 10 for Marshall. Yeah, Ferguson and Webb doing a great job. They string everything out and give him room to cut back inside. And you see Eric Thomas, he's running to his left. Well, you don't see it. There's 59, Ferguson. You know, he's a guy that's been on several different preseason All-America picks. Bob Greasy's preseason All-America pick. The guy can play football, and he's getting a lot of recognition. Good numbers on Chapman. Again, he and Thomas with the running game today for Marshall. That is seventh carry of the day. Here's that little flare. Out it goes to Moss again. Moss turns and stays inbound as Brooks has him in arm. But they peel off another, and that... That's one of the things about the Marshall offense. We saw this in so many of the championship games. You and I mentioned the Youngstown State great series they had. If they didn't have the long ball, they were very content to run the ball, certainly with, with Chris Parker they had the last few years, but also to use the underneath the coverage in the passing game, and they do it very, very well, and they're continuing under new coach Bob Pruitt. Well, you've got to, you've got to have a system and a quarterback that, fit, that will run the system and take what the team gives you rather than try to force it and get the big play all the time. Presser playing behind. Danny Warfel at Florida transfers. He starts here and he hands it off. And again, they get uh, more running room. This time they're going to come in with uh, Javon Darling running the ball. They've got another running back in. And we haven't even seen Turner today, who has also been a running back that they've used with great regularity in that backfield. Gain of five on the play, second down and five. They've just got so many weapons here. You see them on the pitch. Not much there. Good defensive stick there. But they've just got so many weapons at Marshall that they, you know, there's nothing you can really key on, in on defensively. Darling. You start taking away the running back, they've got a tight end, three yep. wide receivers that can control a game. Darling had gained only 92 yards coming to the game today and gets his first carry. First down, 10 to go for Marshall in Appalachian State Territory at the 28. Thomas back in. Breaks backs almost on virtually every play. And the left side of the line continues to work well before finding linebacker Dexter Coakley is able to wrap up the ankles and drop him down. And methodically, Marshall marching up the football field trying for the go-ahead score. Well, they, they, they look like they've made their adjustment. They're just blowing people off the ball, and that's one thing they weren't doing. Watch this. Here's the penetration. You see Marshall, look at this, two, three, four, five yards into the secondary. The running back gains four or five yards before he has to make contact. Great job, as you made mention, by Ferguson. 6'3", 280. Just to his left is Mike Webb, 6'4", 275. Not all that big as he's flared out to Moss. And Moss turned, looked back at the secondary man coming up in a hurry. That was Johnson, but concentration was not totally there on that catch, or non-catch, as it turned out. Well, you know, sometimes a young kid, here's a freshman, he's used to catching a lot of footballs, and he goes through a half a game where he's shut down except for the one touchdown catch, and he was trying to make something happen, and again, just like Otis Smith did in the first pass to him, took his eyes off the ball. Look at that. He was looking upfield yep. before the ball even got there. Well, another crucial third down play here for Marshall. Third down, they need four. Presser at her center. He may be aldivalizing at the line of scrimmage. Wide receivers are Martin and Moss to the left, and they're throwing underneath the Moss just out of his reach. And it's going to bring up a fourth down play. 
Moss that time saw, I think, coming across the middle, Chuck Payne, and hesitated just for a moment and didn't quite get to the football. Yeah, I don't think that ball was out of his reach. I yeah. think uh, he thought he was going to get nailed. Watch number yeah. nine come into the picture here. Yeah, he just short. Oh, boy, that ball's right there on target. Now here you wonder, you go back and second guess the coach. You're gaining six, seven yards of rush. You've got second down and three and a half. And you go with the pass, which leaves you in a passing situation on third and four. And, and it, here it stifles the drive. And the Mountaineers do again exactly what they did in the first half. They bend, but they don't break. Marshall looks impressive between the 20 yard lines, but they aren't making the plays all the way down the field. And not exactly what a head football coach wants to see. Only 10 men on the football field for a lined up field goal of 43 yards. Openlander has to wait for a timeout, and they're forced to spin one of their timeouts, which could come in handy before the game is over. 11.35 to go. Third, Appalachian State still with the lead. Well, college football in the Southern Conference with our doubleheader today on Sports South. Don't forget Georgia Southern and the Citadel. Coming up on Sports South right after we're through here at Boone. Good look at Openlander getting ready to try a field goal. Openlander so far this year has hit eight out of his ten field goals and is perfect on extra points at 37 of 37, but this is a very crucial three. It'll be a 44-yarder as they'll put it down at the 34. And that timeout, they had to spin, and then a fourth down play, they kicked the ball. Again, no win to contest with here. In the third, good snap, and the kick is up. It's got plenty of distance, and it is good. So a 44-yard field goal has tied the game at 10, and Openlander celebrating, as does the Marshall fandom, and they don't get the big one they needed, but they do get the score to tie. Well, that, 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 it's a whole, whole new ball game right now, but I tell you, they, I question that call on second down and four when, they, when they're running the ball so well to put them in that passing situation. So as they continue to celebrate, Openlander gets ready to kick off. We'll be back with that in a moment on a tie game. Gorgeous fall afternoon as far as the color is concerned here in Boone, North Carolina. Been overcast and light rain most of the day. Field has been a little slippery in the first half. Haven't seen a lot of uh, slipping and sliding in the second half. It has let up for the most part. As we've got a 10-10 game after the 44-yard field goal by Openlander, who gets ready to kick off to Appalachian State. Dangerous people. Brooks, along with Adams, back the field of football at their goal line. This will be coming to Brooks. He's got two interceptions defensively and feels it at the goal line. Sprints to the outside, takes quite a crack at the 18-yard line, and that's where Appalachian State will take over the ball. And Brooks picks up the pieces and heads back. Derek Walker on the stop that time for Marshall. So it'll be interesting to see how Baker now reacts as he comes out with the football here after the game is now tied. And also we'll see how well the offensive line of Appalachian State's going to handle that strong front line of Marshall we've been talking about. And actually been held pretty much in check outside of a, a couple of plays. Baker's been forced to throw in a hurry. Yeah, they, they pretty much had their, their say-so offensively. And they've been doing a good job. Nice execution. Now, one thing you got to look for, too, I don't know if it's a matter of Appalachian State getting tired or what. Even though they had that big comeback last week and the win over Georgia Southern, they've been outscored 51-23 in the fourth quarter this year. So uh, they, they kind of get weaker in the second half where Marshall pours it on. So it would be curious to see if that happens again today. Well, as they had to mark off a penalty against Appalachian State, moves the ball back inside their own 10 to give to Scott. Scott finds a little room and then makes more of his own. Out to near the 16-yard line. You know, interesting about Scott and the fact of 5'10", 202, must have some very, very great uh, pins under him because when he gets people on his back, he literally carries them two or three yards. Strong lower body. I mean, he's just, uh, he's got the whole package. He's, he's quick, he's shifty, he's got good open field speed, and, he, and he's got the patience to sit back and read a hole. Eric and Wade working up here in the booth with us. Say he's rather chiseled when they see him around campus here. And again, another outstanding athlete, as is Copley on the other side defensively. Here's Smith, uh, Scott again, excuse me, up to the 19-yard line as he tries to reach the 20 and may, after a second and third effort, have done so for a first down. Well, there's exactly what you were just talking about. He had three guys on his back and actually drove forward for another couple yards when it looked like he was going down. Nose of the football is right at the 20. And let's see if they make the decision to move the chains. They do. First and 10, Appalachian State. Bake Baker, a junior. Young man making his first start out of Kingston, North Carolina. 
had thrown only 11 passes coming to the game. He did all of those last week in the come from behind against Georgia Southern. 35-28. That, of course, earned him the start today, and he's earning even more play from Jerry Moore. Little swing pass coming out here to Burton, and Burton's got it out, and now the offensive Appalachian State starts to click with what they need to do, and that, of course, is to get it underneath. Well, Marshall's going to give him some room, so he's got to do just like Cresser does, take the short throw and let Burton or whoever catches it take off and run with it. Good block. That, that. that ball was actually tipped there. I thought so when I saw it from up here. B.J. Cohen just got enough of a hand on the ball, just turned it a little bit to one side, but it was still... Uh, it wasn't enough to knock the ball off target, obviously. And again, another long gainer there of eight yards. Second down and two now for Appalachian State. They'll give it to their bread and butter man. It's Scott, and he's going to gain about a yard at most. He was trying to reach the 30, which would be enough for a first down. Now brings up a third and one. By the way, we'd like to announce that the fourth largest crowd in the history of ASU is packed into the stands today. And the fact that they've spread them out over the grassy area, 23,458 to watch Southern Conference football today at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. And they are watching a dandy tied at 10-10 here in the third and a third down play for Appalachian State. Stacked running backs, Young and Scott behind Baker. They give it to Young, the first back through, and he's got the first down. I like the call. Everybody on the Marshall defense is going to be looking for Damon Scott on that play. They give it to the fullback, who everybody is reading as the lead blocker. He gets a nice hole and does a nice job hanging on to the football. And Larry McLeod, the number one tackler for Marshall, on the stop. But it's a first down for Appalachian State after, again, Marshall drove nearly the length of the football field, got a 44-yard field goal after a penalty. From open lander to tie the game at 10, and now Appalachian State on their first drive of the third period. Appalachian State scoring on a run by Scott. Marshall scoring on a pass to Moss, and now they give it to Scott again, dragging away from tacklers and dragging them out beyond the 43-yard line. You know, it's always interesting. I saw John Settle, I saw Chip Hooks, and now I'm watching Damon Scott here at Appalachian State, and they have had three great, great players. Settle a little different, certainly, from Hooks and Scott. Yeah, Settle was uh, in a class by himself, uh, almost 5,000 yards rushing in his career here. But uh, I tell you what, Damon Scott's impressing me today. He's got that that, that incredible leg drive here. Here you see uh, Maxwell trying to make the hit. He just shreds him, picks up another four or five yards. He's looking awfully good. Scott, by the way, is down to only 18 yards needed for 1,000 for the season. Going to try to get a few more here, and he does it at the old-fashioned way, earning it as he bangs off of tacklers. And moves it beyond the 45 out to the 47-yard line. You know, it was one thing that always impressed me with great running backs is the tremendous way they're able to keep the balance. And one thing about Scott is low center of gravity when he reaches the line of scrimmage, Cliff. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a hard target to find, but uh, he's hard to knock off his feet. I, I've compared him to Emmett Smith twice now, but that's what impressed me about Emmett Smith when I was with the Cowboys. Uh, in practice, obviously, it wasn't live, but nobody could ever knock him off his feet. There's the numbers on Scott so far. He normally would carry the ball up to 35, 40 times a game if it so dictates of running the ball most of the time, and that's his 18th carry of the day out to midfield. So not only does he have to be quick and strong, but he's, he's durable. He's I mean, be. the guy's taking a lot of hits. He's getting about two college careers in here. You know, the game right now, and of course many of the fans simply setting and waiting for something to happen, it's what is probably could be called a little bit of dull football. Both teams are trying to use the running game, just trying to get the one-upmanship, but it's called the old cat and mouse game here. When does the running game spring the big pass? When does the running game suddenly spring the big play as well? And here comes Baker to throw. First time of the drive. He's going to just dump this away, and fortunately he throws it where there isn't anybody as he dumped that one into some coverage. Taunton was the man that was on top of him and drops him along with B.J. Cohen. That was a little frightening. Yeah. I don't know if he was, uh, if he knew there was nobody there, but that's a dangerous pass when you're falling down on your back. You want to try and get that ball out of bounds if you're throwing it away. Don't throw it out into the field of play. And it didn't look like he was aiming for anyone in particular. You know, your quarterbacks always have a, uh, a special fan up in the stands that you would say, well, if I have to throw it away, I'm going to throw it right there, right? Pick him out early. That's right. Pick somebody out with a bright coat so you can always find him. Gwen. Look at this. Look at this punt indeed. It will definitely go into the end zone and out of the back. 
and Gwen along with Hanson on the other side. The punters have done their job extremely well today. And after all, there are three parts to the game. Offense, defense, special teams, which includes your kickers. And they have stood the, the test of time today to keep it tied at 10-10. We'll be back with more of the third period here on Sports South as the best of the Southern Conference comes your way from Boone. Sam Smith along with the quarterback clip stop and Matt Swearad as we're here in Boone, North Carolina at Appalachian State. They celebrate their homecoming and they're in a 10-10 tie with the number one team in all of one double-A football, the Thundering Herd of Marshall. Eric Kresser, who was again playing in the shadow of Danny Warfel that right now is hands down for the Heisman this year. Could transfer to one double A and when Bob Pruitt the defensive coordinator from Florida came to Marshall he came with him. And he's starting here but his club right now on a 10 10 tie as they try to gain some room in the underbelly of the Appalachian State defense. Let's go downstairs here again is Matt Swearad. All right Sam joining me here is Jim Morris the head baseball coach for the Mountaineers at Appalachian State and Jim's just off the road from recruiting. Going into the baseball season, it's going to start soon now, getting into the whole uh, spring training aspect of it. You have a club that wants to contend for the Southern Conference Championship, and the new tournament site is down at Charleston, South Carolina, a new stadium. That's going to be very exciting. Oh, yes. It's always a great tournament at Charleston. They do a great job. We're looking forward to the last weekend in April to go to the new stadium down in Charleston. Let's go back to San for a moment. We'll come back down in a minute. Well, it is a second down play. Here's Cresser looking to swing it out on the near side, trying to throw out to Mark Wicks, number two. But it's incomplete. Brings up a third down. Back down to Matt. A lot of changes here at Appalachian State. All the construction behind us. Your new baseball stadium is going from where there was always a lot of water to up behind the stadium here at Kid Brewer Stadium. It's going to be very nice. Oh, yes. We're very excited about it. It's going to be a great uh, change for us because, as you said, we're in a low area that flooded very often. So we're very excited about it. It should be a fine facility. Southern Conference, always a solid baseball conference. This should help your recruiting as well. Oh, it'll help us tremendously. It's going to be a tremendous plus to our program. Thanks, Coach. Enjoy the second half. Thank you. Back up to Sam. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Coach. Third down play for Marshall. Martin went in motion. They may be looking for him over the middle. The ball's knocked away at the line of scrimmage. Getting his hands up, I think, was Jason Hatcher, number 44. Nonetheless, Kresser and the Thundering Herd are denied by the Appalachian State defense. And we talked about pressure from the other side on Baker. Look what Appalachian State's doing, Cliff. Well, they had three sacks in the first half, and they're getting in quick there. They bat the ball down. They've, they've been very, very impressive up front. Marshall just can't sustain a drive. So a punt again by Hanson. He'll be kicking this football away, trying to get it upfield. And as he's done for the afternoon, the left footer booms a beauty out of there. Adams is driven all the way back inside his 20 and lets it go. This time it takes an ASU bounce and will come back up to around the 16-yard line where they'll down it. And that's where ASU will take over. I don't know what's going on with the air down there, but I don't think I've ever seen a punting exhibition like this. These guys are absolutely booming it. By the way, if we get this score correct, a final now? East Tennessee State University has maintained a share of the lead by defeating Furman, knocking them from the ranks of the undefeated in the conference. 21 to 19, a final score. East Tennessee State University winning in one of the Southern Conference games today. Big game for the Buccaneers and Coach Mike Cavan. I mean, if you can believe this, East Carolina, you got Gwynn, he's had six punts for 42-7, and Hanson for Marshall, four punts for a 59-yard average. <laughs> wow. And again, they're getting a lot of hang time. And then this time, Scott on his own turf. You may want to talk to the athletic department about this new turf before this game's over. He slips as he reaches the line of scrimmage. He says, fellas, it looks good, but it's a little slippery right now. You know, maybe maybe it's not like pro football where these guys don't have about six or seven different pair of shoes to, right. to change into. You know, <laughs> if the field's real wet, you got a certain shoe. If it's dry, you wear tennis shoes. And his feet are just going right out from under him. Of course, his could be fatigue. Maybe he doesn't know how to run without three guys on his back. That's probably true. <laughs> B.J. Cohen was trying to get there before he fell down. Second down, 12 yards to go. Swing to the outside to Burton. A great play by Goins, but he gets a flag on it. Oh, he was baiting the referee, hoping for a good call, but I don't think he got it. As they came one from behind, he didn't see that flag, but he got one from the front. Kevin Burton was the intended receiver that time. I'm thinking they called pass interference on Burton again. That's just, that That's would be the second, second time. time I, yeah, the second time I've seen him dive to break up a play. Nope, they called they it on Marshall. It the other way. You know? It was the same combination. Wow. Remember that? Yep. I thought they called him for diving in behind trying to break this up. Let's see. 
Oh, yeah, there it is. He got bumped out. So, again, so Burton, really. who got the offensive interference early in the game, and now Goins, a man that he had the same confrontation with, gets it going the other way. This TV is a wonderful thing. I mean, I, you couldn't see that from our angle. But this camera stuff. I you like, like this, huh? I like replay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, by the way, instant replay <laughs> in the NFL, I'll, I'll put that question oh, to you in a minute. Man. That's another story, isn't it? It's now a first down and 10 yards to go here for Appalachian State. A 10-10 game, 5-41 third period. Everything this game was expected to be. Marshall, number one, undefeated 7-0. Appalachian State had stumbled three times this year, twice in the conference. A luster a little off of it, but this is a great rivalry and continues today. Bake Baker making his first started quarterback for Appalachian State to throw. Over the middle to Vollmer. Incomplete. Had it on his hands. Maxwell was there, but Vollmer could not bring him in. And I tell you what, he had the space. He, he, he ran a good route, was wide open. Well, not wide open, but that ball was perfectly thrown. Vollmer should have hung on, but let's credit Maxwell with making the hit right at the same time the ball got there to break up the play. Good play action fake. Baker sees his man. Look at this. I mean, this is a perfect throw. Oh, my. Got to make that catch. That's what wins games. Jeff Vollmer catching eight passes for 82 yards so far this year out of Longboat Key. That would have been a big one for his team right there. Now it brings up second down and 10. Out of the shotgun. They hand it off. Trying to keep his balance again is Scott as he runs straight ahead. By the way, that possession time again, ASU still 22 minutes and 17 seconds, 16-22 for Marshall. So we said at the start of the game, you keep it out of Marshall's hand, you may have a chance to win, and they've certainly done that and took care of business there. You know, looking through the stats, that's one thing that surprised me. Marshall's just dominated everybody they've played this year, but they have their time of possession is less than half of a game, so the other team generally controls the ball, but that's because that's they score so doggone quick. Jerry Moore, Bob Pruitt looking on. You saw the third down conversion rate for both teams. Here's Baker over the middle and behind Smith just a tad. <laughs> And that one would have been uh, very interesting to see if he could have gotten the first down because he had really a defensive lineman. Ricky Hall was the man that was the closest to him. Incompleted pass, fourth down play. If that ball's out in front of him, he, he may pick up the first down. If he does that and turns the corner, he's got a big gain in front of him. Now we'll see what Gwen, as these two punters have absolutely been sensational today, can do. Tim Martin will be back. And you know the interesting part about Martin, he has creeped back about five yards further each and every punt by Gwen. He's only got 72 yards. I'll probably have to pooch it. And he bangs one out of there. Look at this kick. Down to the 17. Martin fields it. Good block there. No, apparently it was behind. And Martin's on his way. But an illegal block by Marshall will bring this back. And the man that's most disappointed is going to be going to through the block after the Appalachian State player had turned the corner. Got a block in the back. Punters must be getting tired. That was only 54 yards. So again, the penalty going up against Marshall. <coughs> After they will get the football, it'll be marked from the spot of the foul, which is inside the 20-yard line, around the 18-yard line. And another booming punt once again by Gwen of 55. I think Pruitt's a little bit angry. That, was, that block looked pretty close. From up here, it looked like a good block. See, he doesn't have television. No, he, he, <laughs> get the coach a monitor. Get that guy a monitor, will you? Well, it puts don't, Marshall don't, back inside the tent. Don't give him a microphone, though. That, <laughs> uh, this isn't the clip right here. It was just before we yeah, stopped on it. It's just off to the right of your screen. It was the block by Goins, number 36. In the back of uh, the Appalachian State player. So first and 10 for Marshall. They'll try to keep it comfortable on the ground as good play by Thomas. Almost what Damon Scott has been able to do, and that's bounced to the outside. And an excellent game for the Thundering Herd. Sure, he picks up six and a half yards after getting stopped in the background. There's the standing, Sam. Well, with East Tennessee State coming up again with their win, they go 5-0. Marshall currently 4-0 and tied at 10-10. Furman has dropped to 4-1. Happy State at 2-2. And you see Chattanooga, the Citadel, VMI, and Western Carolina rounding out this year in the Southern Conference. Second game, Georgia Southern against the Citadel at Charleston here on Sports South. Thomas bouncing to the outside. And he's got it up for the first down as Marshall again testing the middle of the line in their last drive and now trying to bump it to the outside. And Thomas does a good job before Mike uh, Webb 
uh, gets him the final clearing block to get him upfield. Again, Webb and Ferguson on that. Both both of these teams are, are strongest on their left side, and that's where they've had the most success running the ball today behind Webb and Ferguson. Offensive line for Marshall, by the way, averages, you ready for this? 6'5", 278. So they've got some excellent size along that front line for Marshall. They've got a first down. They're out at their 27-yard line. Presser to Martin, and he took his eyes off the football. You know, there was such vicious hitting going on, and Coakley was there. And interesting enough, up field was Avery, one of the defensive tackles as well. And Martin could hear some footsteps and just literally took his eyes off of it and dropped it. There's been three or four balls today that have been well thrown. One was picked off, the one that Moss couldn't grab early. Receivers got to look those balls in. That's now the so frustrating quarterback for doesn't quarterback. get ticked or anything, does Oh, he? no, never. No, okay. no. We, we high-five them. Way to go, guys. Yeah, right. My fault. I was <laughs> spinning too hard. Second down, 10 for Marshall. Thomas trying to get some room in the middle. Very little, if any, maybe a yard. Avery and Hatcher right on top of the play. You know, good size across that defensive line, 242, 266, 264, and 240. Across the front line for Appalachian State, the three linebackers, excellent size, 208, 224, and 228. And, of course, the secondary may be piecemeal a little today, but they have really stood the test with Brooks getting two intercepts for Appalachian State, and they're in the game tied at 10-10. Third down, nine yards to go for the Thundering Herd. Presser, time to throw. Moss got the catch and a Ooh. touchdown. He's gone. Moss gets his 13th uh, touchdown of the year and his second of the day as Presser again stood in the pocket. One of the Appalachian State players, I believe it's Brooks, is down as he, along with another defensive back, collided just as Moss made the catch. Pulled his way free of the defenders and takes it in for the score. Yeah, absolutely perfectly thrown ball. Here you see Cresser drop back. They're running the thin post. You, you don't want to let him get too deep. You want to hit that seam between the corner and safety. I'd say he hit it. He hit it perfectly. And Moss is, he, well, that's, that's a walk for him. I mean, this guy can fly. Fenderson was a man that banged into Brooks. And as they take it the length of the field and indeed do so, after another great punt by Gwynn, they try the extra point, and it's up, and it is good. As Openlander splits the uprights, and Marshall, the thundering herd, will take the lead for the first time today. They were down 7-0, tied it at 7, went down 10-0. Openlander comes back to tie it, and now they've got a 17-10 lead with 3-0-2 left to go in the third period. A sigh of relief somewhat from the Marshall side. Well, they've got to feel good about that, but it's just a matter of time. A nice pass route. The corner's playing inside of him, but with a good route, you've got uh, Brooks was looking back inside at the quarterback Whew. and just assumed that Moss was going to run outside of him. He didn't even know that he made the move to the inside. Looks like an antelope when he gets oh. in the open field. What great speed at 6'5". Young man is only a freshman. Going to hear a lot of records coming from this young man at Marshall. As the Thundering Herd trots back out to kick off, again trying to improve to 8-0, Appalachian State now has an opportunity to see what their offense will do. Adams is back there along with Otis Smith now to return the kick of Openlander. You know what you, you got to wonder about a guy like Moss is with that kind of talent, why, you know, why wouldn't he be at some major school? <laughs> well, he was at Florida. Oh, he was. And he transferred along with Cresser. Ah. Yeah. Well, says, I go. need somebody to throw to. So he just oh, said, hey, yeah, I want you. Yeah, Moss might be just another face down there at Florida. My gosh. Checking yep. back in the record books, Marshall has not won here in Boone since 1987. Hmm. They haven't won yet today. 302 third. They've got a 17-10 as there's Randy Moss's numbers. Over 100 yards receiving with only four catches, but a couple of touchdowns. And here comes Adams. Adams with an excellent run back for ASU. Out to the 32, and that'll give the offense a little push from behind. As an anxious ASU crowd looks on to see what the offense can do. Richard DeAndres comes up to make the final stop. Look at the play again from behind. There's what the quarterback gets to see. He sees that big hole, and all you do is put the ball in the middle of the hole. 
If you throw it any further downfield, let the ball hang any more, then the safety rips Moss's face mask off. So you've got to get him the ball before he's more than 18 or 22 yards downfield. Moss, who averages about 18 per catch, has improved to 25 per catch in this game. And that, of course, the big long one. Baker underneath. Nice little slant in by Smith. Smith out to the 44-yard line for ASU, and that'll be enough for a first down. So they come right back to the play that uh, they missed on on third and nine right before they punted the ball away to Marshall, and they hit this one. Smith picks up first, first down yardage. You know, it's interesting to look. The booth next to us is the Marshall coaching staff. On the opposite end is Appalachians coaches. And, of course, a host of numbers, plays, defense, and what have you sitting in front of them. And they quickly go back to the drawing board for Marshall as ASU is hit for a first down pass. 17-10. Marshall now with a lead by seven on a long touchdown pass. Presser to Moss. Oh, oh. Bots in and out. And again, that one touched by Cohen at the line of scrimmage and thought he had an opportunity. You see our booth. Here and just to our right, there you see a good look at the Marshall coaches up in the booth as they call the signals down to the sideline and defensive coordinators working to see what they can do about stopping as ASU with a second down and 10 yards to go. Well, I bet they wish they had one of our TVs too. But they did. I turned that around so we couldn't see that. <laughs> Not being tacky, folks. We just couldn't see it if we turned it the other way. Second down, 10 for ASU. Out of the shotgun again is Baker. Good snap this time. Pocket. Drops back a little. He's got Smith down to the 45-yard line. If they give him the progress, and I believe they do. Great catch in front of Goins. Good great spot break. by the official, too. Yeah, I was, was wondering if they'd give him that. Totten, by the way, was a man putting the pressure on Baker. He stood in that pocket. It kind of retreated back. He was actually throwing off his back foot here, Cliff. Oh, yeah. He's done a good job today. Just keep drifting back, buying himself time. You, know, you can make this throw when you read man-to-man -man coverage. You try to throw the ball drifting backwards like that, lobbing it into the middle against zone, you're a dead man. But he makes a nice throw there. And let's credit Otis Smith with coming back to the football and making the play. So another first down by the Mountaineers as the Thundering Herd trying to hold on to their lead. A little delay coming to Scott. Damon, the number one rusher in all of the Southern Conference this year. And by the way, that includes another outstanding running back among many, Thomas Haskins at BMI. Having another great year as well, so they are blessed with outstanding running backs. Eric Thomas, had he been able to stay healthy, but certainly been in that same class with all of those for this year in the Southern Conference. Second down, it'll be about six yards needed on a gain of four to the 40. So far, 21 carries now for 92 yards. Only unofficially eight yards away. Make that six yards away from a 1,000. Okay. Baker, got to be Dale. As from the backside, there was no help on picking up the linebacker, Emery. And when Baker turned, he had company in the Marshall crowd. Certainly appreciates the defensive move there to bring up a long third down play. Well, the coaches in the next booth over here are certainly excited about the call they sent down to the field. They called the right defense for the right play. Nobody was fooled by the bootleg action. And we could hear a roar go up from the, the coaches next door. <laughs> it's almost like that point of Baker turned the corner and said, something didn't go exactly right yep. here. Third down. Big play needed now here for Appalachian State. Out of the shotgun is Baker again. The snap. Fumble momentarily. Steps up in the pocket. is pulling for Scott. But he can't get there defensively back. Marshall running stride for stride with John Grace with Scott. But it was overthrown as Baker regained his composure but overthrew his receiver and was forced to punt the ball away. So Bob Pruitt sighs a sigh of relief on the sideline after being a little upset with a block in the back call a few moments ago. Looks a little happier but not much. <laughs> As it'll be Gwen kicking again. I'd hate to see him angry if that was happy. <laughs> He'll try to get some hang time on this one, and he's going to do it. Martin signals for a fair catch, will not make a block this time, and they're going to get it at the one-yard line. Special teams coming down. Number 16 is Earl Hunter, a junior out of Columbia, South Carolina, makes the catch right at the one-yard line, and Marshall deep in their own territory. And the kicking game continues to be a big part of this game today. I, I've seriously never seen two punters punt the ball so well on the same day in my life. I mean, every single punt's been a thing of beauty, even the pooch kicks. 
Appalachian State had a kicker here, Alexander, I believe. Wasn't Alexander their kicker a few years ago that was a, just an extremely kicker? An excellent kicker. Went on to the NFL. Kicked for a while as Marshall tries to dig out of the shadow their own goalpost. Chattanooga gain maybe two as he pushes a pack forward ahead to the four-yard line. Well, Appalachian State's defense has done what they needed to do. They have bent, certainly on that long pass play. The coverage was there, but Moss made a good play to break it. But otherwise, it's been a very solid effort here by Appalachian State today. I'm, I'm sure they felt coming into this game that if they held Marshall to 17 points, they had a chance to win the football game. I don't think uh, they could expect to hold them any lower than that. Now we're done with three quarters and 17-10. The Mountaineers are very much in this football game, and if they can stop Marshall right here, they can overtake the momentum, come down and tie the game, and uh, be right back in this. Well, a 45-yard average on the punts here by Gwen, forcing Marshall back in the shadow of their own goal line, and they'll start the fourth period with a lead of 17 to 10 as we return to Southern Conference football on Sports South. We start the fourth quarter of our Sports South College football game of the week on Sports South. Doubleheader Georgia Southern and Citadel following us. A 72-yard touchdown strike from Cresser to Moss has been the difference in the game, 17 to 10. Cresser had thrown for a 59-yard touchdown strike early this year as his longest, and Moss had caught one from 67, so that one stands up as their longest of the year. And it gives them the lead as they've got the ball now with a second down at their own four-yard line. Gary Cresser. Hand off to Chapman trying to bump to the outside. They string it out nicely. Defensive end Steve Carson from Durham, North Carolina was there waiting. And again, Dexter Coakley penetrating inside the backfield again. Big play here for, for uh, the Mountaineers. I mean, to stop again, stop Marshall again deep in their own territory and get that punt. Last time they were backed up in this end zone, remember Marshall came up with yep. a 29-yard gain with a broken play. Yeah, you could almost uh, identical position, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Near hash mark. About the same situation on a third down play. Well, if the quarterback slips, you know what the play is. <laughs> they throw Ooh. it on the middle and ten it for Martin. <laughs> DiBernardo, the linebacker, was in the deep drop, number 50. And again, that one does not to Martin, and you got to credit a pretty good rush on the quarterback as he had to throw that one a little quicker than Martin could get free. Cresser had to get rid of it quickly. DiBernardo was so focused on the receiver that if he'd have been looking for the football, he catches that and walks into the end zone. The scariest moment in all of a football player's career comes right now. You've got a foot just out of the back of the end zone. Hanson has to get it out, and Appalachian State will be coming. A good snap, and the left footer does have time as Appalachian State had set up for their turn. Not as good a punt as he's had today. Adams at the 45. He'll take it down to the 38-yard line where Appalachian State will have some excellent field position. And they would try to go for a tying score if they can, down by seven. Emory down on the coverage. And it'll be first and ten for the Mountaineers as Bake Baker comes back into the lineup as the quarterback here for the Mountaineers. So with a beautiful color here in Boone, North Carolina, college football in the Southern Conference at its best. We're back after this message. Welcome back to Kid Brewer Stadium as we have 14.06 to go in the fourth quarter. This is a very big game for the Mountaineers. A lot on the line. Down by seven right now. The Mountaineers last week were down by 14 in the fourth quarter on the road at Georgia Southern. They came back, outscored the Eagles 21 to nothing. A bigger opponent today, but they have to do it to keep their postseason hopes alive. Let's go back up to the booth. Well, Matt, the fireman that pulled them out of the fire last week is ducking under center, Bake Baker. Is his team down by seven? Back into the pocket. Flares it out to the near side to Damon Scott. Still trying to get some room, and the ball is free. Still up on the ground, and finally flops into the hands of Sean Clark, one of the offensive linemen. And Appalachian State may have dodged a bullet, but they're going to unstack and find out for sure. Scary moment there. By the way, another score from the Southern Conference as Bob Pruitt looks on to see who's got it. Tennessee Chattanooga, 14 to three leaders over Western Carolina in another game today. And of course, East Tennessee staying unbeaten in the conference with a two point win over Furman, 21-19. And Appalachian State will maintain control as Clark was the man that finally came up with it. A young man, interesting enough, playing for Appalachian State and plays for Charleston, or was growing up in Charleston, West Virginia, just in the shadow of Huntington. 
Watch again as this ball gets free. Sean Clark gets a gift. He's just sitting on the ground back behind everything, and the ball's <laughs> kicked right into him. Look, Mom. There he goes. <laughs> and on a second down, and 18 to go for Appalachian State. Baker again out of the shotgun. He's looking to throw it over the middle. That time again, it was tapped at the line of scrimmage, with Baker getting all kinds of rush from B.J. Cohen. And incomplete brings up another third down play. You know, we were looking at that time of possession again, Appalachian State. Uh, about to 26 and a half minutes to 18 and a half for Marshall. Marshall, of course, getting the long play, which set up and got their touchdown, though. There's that possession time. Big, big day for Appalachian State. Unfortunately for them, they're down by seven. Marshall getting the big play to get that lead, a 72-yard strike from Presser DeMoss. I don't know what the difference is, but the last two series, Marshall's been getting a lot more pressure on Baker. The last two plays, B.J. Cohen, the last play, the play before Billy Lyon just unloaded on him when he let go of the football. Three-man rush for Marshall. Baker's got time to throw, and he is throwing down deep to Otis Smith in the end zone. Collision at the goal line, and incompleted pass. Smythe was the first defender back there. Trying to get it down deep as they were throwing into the end zone. And again, Otis Smith was the intended receiver upfield. Larry Moore and Smythe both right there. And the jump ball resulted in an incomplete and punt time again for Quinn. Baker has to step up in the pocket. Got a guy right in front of him, but not deep enough for the first down. So he takes the deep throw. Everybody's going for the football, so they're not going to make any call there. Just a little bumping around, no damage done. No blood, no foul. <laughs> Quinn will hit this about his own 45. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's one of those that will turn over and come right down at the goal line. No, it'll go about five yards deep. And Gwen very upset that he kind of got too much leg into that one. Trying to get the hang time, and he got the hang time, but not uh, quite enough short distance. Well, he's used to punting the ball 45 yards yeah. today, and he didn't have enough room. And the only one these guys haven't hit on the button was the last one that Hanson had, and it was 40 yards. So the two kicking games staying at bay, but Marshall has the lead by seven. Back in a moment. Got some smiling faces in this homecoming crowd here today at Appalachian State. And so far, they've stayed with the number one team. Marshall and the Thundering Herd, 17 to nothing. Marshall has the lead at the moment. And right now, they've got the football first down and 10 to go at their own 20-yard line. Presser, by the way, 13 of 25 for 206 yards, but does have two interceptions as the Marshall QB. Martin in motion. Hand off to Thomas. has got an opening to the near side. Switches the football to the outside hand. Will chased and thrown out of bounds by Fenderson. <laughs> and again, a good clearing block straight ahead of him. John Wade and also out there again was Mike Webb along with Aaron Ferguson. Lyman really doing their job. They really are. He had nothing. He just had that big hole to go through. Coming over here on the right side and he'll cut back to his left. And there's nobody. He's got some pretty serious speed too. Eric Thomas. Unfortunate for him, he had to play in the shadow of Chris Parker, but not getting his day in the sun, so to speak, from Largo, Maryland. First and ten, Marshall with a seven-point lead. The hand off to Chapman, replacing Thomas, and you can see the wall of blockers kind of carrying him ahead to the 40-yard line. Clock is rolling now at 12.57 of the fourth period, and Marshall, if they should indeed go on to score, would really... Make it difficult for Appalachian State and their offense to move and open chance to come back and win the game. When Marshall's had the ball out in the open field and been running their offense, they've really controlled the line of scrimmage this second half. They had their scoring drive, and the only other time they haven't moved the ball is when they're backed up on their one yard line and playing close to the best. Presser with a short drop. Pumps once going to Moss. Moss drops it at the 10. He had his concentration broken as L.J. Brooks jumped up in front of him. But he did have a chance to catch it, but he didn't go. Presser's looking at him. Moss is running back saying, oh, my, what am I going to tell the quarterback now? <laughs> you better tell him it was tipped. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, lie. Let's see if it was tipped. <laughs> well, for starters, I mean, if. If he's got to come up with an excuse, then he can get on Cresser for underthrowing the pass. Yeah, he had to come back a little, didn't he? Well, he had to slow up, and that yeah. gave a chance for uh, L.J. Brooks to jump up and at least distract him if he didn't, in fact. Well, it's a third down and only three for ten this afternoon for Marshall on a crucial third down situation. Cresser again swings it out to Moss. No chance he'll drop this one as he skids to a hold around the 32. Brooks out there on top of him. Also coming out is Coakley, the 
Outstanding linebacker and the defensive player of the year the last couple of years and athlete of the year in the Southern Conference last year. But a first 10 for Marshall as they keep their drive alive and go four for 11 on first down, third down plays. As many times as Marshall's hit that little hitch pass all day today, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that the Mountaineers are laying off in, a, in that three deep zone and giving such a big cushion. Maybe on a short yard situation, roll the corners up, play two deep zone. Moss goes in motion to drag the defense. They try the middle with Chapman, a couple of yards. You know, it's interesting to see the shoes that Moss is wearing. They literally, without further inspection, look almost just like a pair of uh, sneaker type shoes without any kind of cleats on this asphalt. May have some slight ridges, but nothing more. And as you pointed out, there's normally two or three different type shoes that guys like on the AstroTurf or on the artificial surface. These are almost like bowling shoes. <laughs> <laughs> but see, that's a handicap they have to give him. He's so fast, he's not allowed to wear official shoes. Oh, okay. I, I hear you. Second down. About uh, eight yards needed here for Marshall. Cresser changing the call at the line of scrimmage over what defense he sees. And he may see an opening on the passing play, and he does to Wicks, but it's broken up beautifully. Coming up to make the play is going to be Johnson out of Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And Orlando comes up with a big play. He's already got two interceptions for the season, and even though he didn't have a chance to intercept, that made a good timing hit. Yeah, that was a very good defensive play. He, he came in aggressively, timed it perfectly, and broke up a sure 12, 15-yard gain. Very nice as the deuces collide. Third down play again, four for 11 now. For Marshall on this third down at the 31. The corners are off. I wouldn't be surprised to see him come right back with the hitch. 11-12 left to go in the game. Well, they rolled the corner up that time. Presser looking over the middle, wide open is Martin at the 15 to the 10, to the 5, comes to the outside, touchdown Marshall. 31-yard touchdown strike, Presser his third of the day, two to Moss, and now one to Martin, their two receivers, and deflates the Appalachian State Mountaineers, and elates the crowd from Marshall that's traveled here today. Well, they came back and uh, took care of that short out. But what you've got to do when you play a two-deep zone, you've got to knock off that inside receiver somehow, some way, so he doesn't get that deep between the safeties that quickly. You've got to slow him up and pay some attention to him. They didn't, not only did not slow him up, he was totally ignored in the coverage. Tim Openlander will try to add the extra point, and it's up, and it is good. So the thundering herd will go up by the score of 24 to 10. And will take a 14-point lead in the final 11 minutes of this fourth quarter of the game today in Appalachian State. The last time they won here was in 1987. But it lets the Mountaineers have another one of those patented comebacks up their sleeve. This one is going the wrong way for the Mountaineer fans and all for Marshall. Successful programs, of course, are with wins on the field, but it always builds in the stands with the crowd. And certainly Marshall, with another strike from Cresser, have built it in the stands and certainly have done it this way. Martin for the touchdown. And again, just kind of looking back and saying, was I really that wide open? Seven plays, 80 yards, took only 2.11 on the clock, which was a benefit to Appalachian State. They still have time with 11.04, but now down by 14 points, a couple of scores. Oplander to kick off. Smith will step back in his end zone. More than likely will not come out with it. He does not. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line where the Mountaineers will take over the football. Smith may be a very vital part of the offense coming up. They've got to now get the ball to him and see what he can do. He's already had some good catch and runs today. Interesting enough, after dropping his first one, he's come on to play extremely well in catching the ball. Five times for 65 yards for him today. Tim Martin having a nice day, too. Five, five receptions, 94 yards, one touchdown, giving him 47 receptions on the year, almost 600 yards receiving, four touchdowns. Here's Baker underneath the Smith, and he threw it ahead even that time. Maxwell had uh, been out of position, had it been on the money. Smith might have had a pretty good gainer out of it. As Matt Swear had pointed out, they scored 21 points in the fourth quarter against Georgia Southern last week. To pull that one out, two touchdown passes by Baker in that period. And he'll have to do that again to give them a chance to win today. Well, he's got to get back on track. First half, he was a 10 of 15 for 137. And since then, he's gone three for 11 for only 33 yards. And you can bet they're going to start putting some pressure on him now. Down 14 points. They know he has to air it up. 
Yeah, you can see a big rush coming from Line, Hall, Cohen, and Toten. They've really been all over him today. Offensive line gives him time to throw. Underneath, they get it out here to Adams. Adams at the 35, knocked out of bounds, uh, just over the 40-yard line. Nice little swing out here, a little hitch, and they get a good gainer and a first down for the Mountaineers. Good job by Baker there, taking what's there. Sure, he wanted, He knows he has to score two touchdowns, but when it's man-to-man -to -man coverage, you got somebody with the speed of Adams. He runs the quick little inside out. Get it to him quick enough that he can turn up before he gets out of bounds. This is a nice throw. He wasn't that wide open, but he had a step. Took a perfect throw to keep him running full speed. Scott Smythe finally knocking him out of bounds. First and 10 for Appalachian. They're 41. Baker underneath goes to Smith. Smith in a crowd bounces off like a pinball as he gets ahead to around the 46-yard line. Marshall claiming that he was waving the ball around, thus forcing the fumble, but the ref referee says, no, he was down, and no fumble. Marshall with Williams, one of the tacklers, and on top of the play is Bob Pruitt. A little more comfortably walking the sideline, but I guess in college football, you never can be totally comfortable, even with 10-21 and up by 14 points. Well, if he had a look of happiness before. That must be outright elation right there. <laughs> <laughs> Control yourself, Coach. Second down, five yards to go for Appy. Baker out of the shotgun. Underneath to Smith, there's the catch he needed. To the 30, down to around the 27-yard line. Nice look by Baker. Good time for the offensive line to get him to throw. Beckett was the only man back there that had a chance to stop him for a moment, then got company. As Smith cleared the linebackers underneath the safeties and makes a big catch for Appalachian State. Baker gets good time to let the play develop. Let's Otis clear the linebackers to where the hole is. He makes a nice catch and mm. gets laid down softly. It's a pretty good <laughs> shot there as Baker again will be out of the shotgun again. You see Otis Smith nearing the 100-yard receiving mark with seven receptions today. And off to Adams behind the block of Scott and gets it out to around the 19-yard line. Nice job by Scott ahead of him, just giving him a little influence block, and Adams read it beautifully. They'll give him a total of four yards in the play. Second down, six yards to go for Appalachian State. Yeah, they really get a, need to get a rather quick score here because now under 10 minutes with 9-17, a score here, defense hold, another opportunity, but you will be very short on time if indeed they don't get it in rather quickly here. You figure at the most they're going to have this possession and two more. Oh, oh. Underneath, that time behind Smith comes skidding as he tried to go back after it, and that time Baker definitely threw it behind his receiver as Smith tried to come to a skeeching halt. Either the pattern was broken off or Baker had to throw it a little quicker than he wanted to. You can see Smith coming back. Uh, wiping off his hands as he fell on the carpet. Stops the clock, third down, still same six yards. Well, he had plenty of time. He didn't have to hurry it. But uh, he was way off the mark. I'm, but there had to be a little miscommunication there. Maybe his receiver's supposed to run a hook instead of the square end. Maybe the quarterback was thinking the wrong way. But somebody missed the signal. Third down play. Baker stepping up underneath, knocked in the air, and incomplete. A couple of the Marshall players had a chance. Emory the last to try to come up with it. As it was tapped up in the air and incomplete. As I believe McLeod might have got the first hand on it. He does. You see him slapping high five there with Emory as the two linebackers almost collaborated on a steal. Baker, good job stepping up. But it's, it's tough to step up to your left and throw a crossing pattern back. It's moving from left to right and get it in there. Appalachian State obviously down by 14 on a fourth down play. Has to go for it here. Coming up next, don't forget more from the Southern Conference from Charleston, the Citadel. The Bulldogs against the Eagles of Georgia Southern on Sports South. Here's a fourth down play. They dump it off to Scott. He's got to get to about the 17-yard line, and I don't believe he made it. As he's down, they'll spot it down around the 19, and that probably will not be enough, and the ball should go over to Marshall if the spot is true and again just from our eyeball look at it here it would be short and it's first down Marshall is her defense hold and now Appalachian State has to hope to get a quick turnover watch the end of this play Sam I'm not so sure he didn't try to fumble this ball knowing it was fourth down and he didn't have enough yardage for it 
Yep. He was, he was trying to he was reach trying out, to throw for it out there. I'll he? tell you what, he worked for every yard he could get. <laughs> but that's all Baker had to throw to. Good job by the Thundering Herd in the secondary. Took everyone else away. That's all he had. So Marshall now will keep it kind of close to the best here with 8.45 to go. Martin goes in motion. And it off to Chapman. Chapman to the slant to the outside, out beyond the 25. Stopped and brought down as he crosses the line of scrimmage. Linebacker Marvin Hodge, who had one of the early sacks on Cresser. Cresser's been rushed, but not the big pressure he had in that first half. No, they got to him pretty well in the first half, but this this half that seems like the Marshall line is just controlling the, the, the defensive line of the Mountaineers very well, whether run, run or pass, they're doing their job. Maybe Mark. that size they have is taking the toll on the Mountaineers. Marshall, by the way, is approaching the 400 yard mark in total offense, 379 to this point. And it comes out, Chapman. There's a flag behind the penalty, or behind the run on a penalty. Chapman slanting to the outside here, Appalachian State knocking it down. Chuck Payne coming up from his secondary spot to make the tackle. And it's going to be a holding call, and it's going to be on Marshall. So again, Bob Pruitt and his Marshall Club will more than likely take their number one ranking to East, uh, excuse me, to Tennessee Chattanooga next week. It'll be a 3:30 game there. Uh, again, Marshall, excuse me, Appalachian State to Chattanooga, and Marshall will be at home against the Citadel. And Marshall, the remainder of the year, plays at home to the Citadel. A big game at East Tennessee State now. That'll be on the ninth, and then they'll close out at home against Furman. So again, with Furman losing by two to East Tennessee State, still those last two games could be very important to them staying, A, undefeated, and two, number one and one of the top seeds in the playoffs. There's the update on the numbers for you. Little delay to Chapman. He's got a lot of running room. And he gains it well out over the 35 near the 40-yard line before Johnson on the left side corner can finally make the stop for Appalachian State. He can slowly see Momentum running out of Appalachian State. They played very well and hard again as it was tied at 10-10 at one point after Openlander tied it to start the third period. Then the big touchdown pass, Cresser to Moss for 72 yards, and then the touchdown again going to Martin. Big hole on the draw. Everybody commits to rushing the passer. You know, you've, you've got a situation now where the Mountaineers are just going, you know, pinning their ears back on every play, trying to make something big happen and end up not being in their lane. And I think you're either going to see that right there. P people getting stopped right at the line of scrimmage or someone not being where he's supposed to. And all of a sudden, the running back bursts into the secondary. And he's got a big gain. Thomas will get only a yard of the play. Second down and nine. More importantly for Marshall, though, they're using the clock at 7.05 to go. Good look at Tim Martin, who, again, with a catch this afternoon, surpassed the 2,500-yard mark on receptions. He did only two yards to do that, got that easily on his first reception. Third player in the history of Marshall to do so. And with a guy like Cresswell that can throw with the best, he hands off to Thomas this time, who vaults forward for another couple of yards. And they keep the drive alive on the ground here, bringing up a short yard situation on third down. Well, it is going to be three, though. <laughs> Offensive line has been rather solid. Wilson and Reed on the right side. Ferguson and Webb and Wade, the center. Young man out of St. Petersburg, uh, excuse me, the Port uh, Republic in Louisiana. And again, he's a young man that has done a good job up the middle. Again, they needed three. They got two. Cresser looking to the sideline to see what Todd Pruitt wants to do here on a short yard situation. Cresser's not come off yet. And now Marshall wants to take a timeout as well, I believe. Or is it ASU? Apparently it's Appalachian State now. Stopping the clock at 5.50 to go here in the fourth period. So as the defense has been on the field a long time trying to hang on here in the second half, they had uh, dominance of the football through about three quarters, but Marshall definitely has kind of taken control of that again, uh, Cliff, and 
I guess that's the sign. They've got some excellent depth, some good people on that Marshall sideline, or they wouldn't be number one in one double A. Well, they're a good, solid football team all around, and probably two or three deep. They've got to be that deep the way they just keep staying on top year after year after year. They've got a great recruiting program going down there, great job being done by the coaches. And to, for them to stay on, for anybody to stay on top of any level of NCAA football is phenomenal. The ride they've had the top division one double A. They just keep putting new bodies in there. Next year, some of these guys will move on, and those guys over on the sidelines will move right in and take over. Well, let's head downstairs in the rain as Matt's still working with us. Matt, take it over. All right, Sam, on the back of all the Mountain Air helmets, you notice the number 54. That 54 is honoring their teammate Aaron Krieg, who's a junior outside linebacker from Dade City, Florida. A couple of weeks ago, at night at his home, he suffered what is thought to have been a heart attack. And right now, he is on medical leave. He's not here in Boone. He's back home in Florida. All the folks here in Boone hope he'll be just ready to go again next fall. But right now, all the thoughts of his teammates are with Aaron back at home. And they're wearing the 54 in their helmets to honor him. Matt, thanks very much. Good job down there today, by the way. Enjoyed working with you as we head down the final moments of the game with 5.50 to go. And it will be punt time for Marshall. And now there's a flag to be thrown, and I think the uh, play clock wound down, so they'll back up five more yards. And Bob Pruitt, once again, not happy with that, as Mr. Bender will march off five against Marshall. Puts Hanson back, gives Appalachian State a little more room upfield to try to get something going here. Quick score, onside kick, recover that, score. Well, I guess you dream a little, but it's possible. Stranger things have happened. And Marshall is very cognizant of that fact, and they know what they've got to do here today. Hanson along with Quinn, if there were some guys that certainly should receive some accolades today, it has to be these two guys. Look at Hanson, five kicks, 55.8 yards, 65 being his longest. I tell you what, his special team people have done a good job of covering that ball down inside the 10. Let's see what he gets this one on. Left footer, good drop, kind of a wobbly kick this time, but it may take a good bounce, and it does. Okay. Tim Martin's down there, takes an excellent bounce for the Mountaineers. They'll watch it as it dribbles towards the five. What a kick. He shanks it and gets 52 yards. Unbelievable. <laughs> Hanson again, and you see the high fives all around. As Chris Hanson again has done his job. Came into this game today averaging about 42. That'll certainly go up. That'll be one of the tops in the conference. As now Appalachian State has a long way to go and very little time to do so. And 5-34, down by a 24-10 score. Penalty yardage so far this afternoon. Marshall's had an abnormal number of penalties for them, 11 for 76. Half a dozen for Appalachian State so far. Baker out of the shotgun in the end zone. Players at the outside to Adams, steps out of bounds, and is he short of a first down or not? Just shy of the 15. Looks like it's short by about a foot. It'll bring up second down and short yardage. More importantly, though, he steps out of bounds to stop the clock. You can see the rain starting to continue to come down here, dampening the spirits of a homecoming crowd that had hoped for the best this afternoon. And really got probably the best of Appalachian State for probably three quarters before Marshall suddenly started taking over there. And you take away a 72-yard pass play from Presser DeMoss when he split the two defenders, and they still could be in quite a football game here. Baker stepping up out of the pocket. He'll run away before finally from behind. Jermaine Swafford will bring him down. And he will get the first down, stopping the clock again as they make the movement of the chain. And stops it at 5.17 to go in the fourth. That one play obviously is, is the turning point here, and I think you could just see it take the life out of the Mountaineer players. They just, it's one of those things that it's almost inevitable. You know it's got to happen sooner or later with the, with the talent that Marshall has. They're going to hit a big play. Great pass over the middle to Adams again. Looking for a block to the outside, being chased and dropped by Larry Moore. But he does cross midfield down to the 49 yard line. And I tell you what, Desmond Adams has had himself a pretty good day today. And he's shaken up as he's out of bounds on the sideline. I think he's just tired there. I hope he is. Nope. Struggling to get to his feet, but makes an excellent reception and run. Clock stops again with 5.03. Nice pass by Baker. Most of the work done by Adams. Makes one little juke and he's off to the races. It's just a shame. App State, they hang in there, hang in there, hang in there, and then they gave up that big play. They just seemed to lose 
lose a little momentum there. Baker back in the shotgun. Big rush is on. Gets away from one man, has it knocked away, looking for the bounce. Still up for grabs, march over the fumble recovery. So Baker again, losing the ball, knocked away by, I believe, number 86, Bill Lyon knocked it away, and McLeod will come up for the fumble recovery. And that does certainly deflate the balloon of Appalachian State with any hopes of winning this with 4.52 to go. Let's watch it again. Makes a good move to get away from uh, Cohen. Spins to his left, and you're, you're right, it was Lyon. Knocks the ball loose, and the duck on things hard to pick up. My, my. You're in a panic. You want to make a play. Did not take the bounce Appalachian State needed, but does for Marshall. And a first and ten. As something's not right with the folks across the way, the chain had not moved uh, rapidly enough. Those guys are a little sleeping here on the... The stick and Bob Pruitt's a little unhappy with it again. But now they got the first and 10. They'll rehuddle and also we'll get uh, a fresh 25 on the play clock. No, 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 no. Well, statistically, first downs are all even. App State wins the battle of the passing yardage. They're up 268 to 245. By the way, this will be the last time these two teams will meet as Southern Conference members. One double A is Appalachian State, and now heading for the Mid American Conference in Division One will be Marshall. And of course, they still will have the opportunity to play, but again, Division One doesn't normally like to step down if you hope to keep your ratings or exactly. any hopes of a bowl situation. So in this situation, the last of the conference games between these two, Appalachian State, of course, had won uh, 14 out of the 20, and first down's all even. Yardage again, we pointed out uh, 410 for Marshall so far today. And, you know, it's been interesting to watch this club because we knew of Moss and Martin and Cresser, Cresser throwing to those two fine receivers. Thomas and Chapman have been a very nice complement to this in the fact that they've used them just enough to make it effective. And you made mention they had to come in first with poise, which they may not have had in the first half, but certainly with balance, and I think they've acquired that today. Well, they've been very balanced in the second half, and, uh, you know, they say a couple of these guys were, uh, transferred here from Florida. This reminds me of the Florida offense. I mean, they seem like they could pick away at you all day long with the running game, but when Florida runs the ball, they, they run it very, very effectively. They just seem to be more of a passing team. This team seems the same. They, it looks like they can do anything they want in the air, but what makes that work is to have a couple running backs that could carry the load on the ground, and it keeps everybody honest. You've got to defend the entire field. Of course, Georgia Southern and the Citadel immediately following here on Sports South. You see the timeouts left. Marshall with only one, Appalachian State with two. Probably will not pay an effect in the game as it's first and 10 Marshall. Thomas is the lone running back and gets the handoff. They try to push the rugby-style pack ahead, and they do as they push it inside the 40 to around the 37-yard line. Of course, the biggest difference between this offense and Florida's would be in their strategy, the way they approach a game. Only up 14 points with That's right. <laughs> four minutes. Steve Spurrier would still be winging it. It'd still be, uh, let's see, let's run the, uh, yeah, let's run that 64-yard pass play we've been practicing all week. Second down, a gain of four, second and six here for Marshall. Thomas stays in as the lone running back. Wide receivers go left and right, and Martin comes in motion. They again, give it off to Thomas. He tries to fight for enough for the first down, maybe about a yard short. As the defense, Coakley in particular, on the bottom of the stack for Appalachian State, and Jerry Moore looks on today as he had high hopes of this club staying in the game, and they did for a while. And he'll have to give up the ghost today for another try at... One of the top teams in the country in 1AA, the Marshall Thundering Herd, as Thomas again has gone over 100 yards, I believe. Coach Moore, those until today, has had pretty good success against uh, Marshall. He's, this will make him 5-3 and three against Marshall, and I'm sure that with the, the run they've had the past several years in 1AA, this isn't the first time he's faced them when they've been ranked number one and been undefeated. Probably most every time he faces them, they're undefeated and ranked number one. Eric Thomas had 116 before that two-yard carry. And it should be enough for the first down to move the chains again and would bring up a first down, but they're going to, yeah, they do move the chains now. And there you see the numbers on him. He does gain a number of 118 on his rushing. 18 carries, did not score today, but again, effective between the 20s and set up the passing game. Cresser, DeMoss, and Martin. Moss with a couple of scores, Martin with the other. And a field goal by Openlander. 
quiet here at uh, Kid Brewer as the handoff goes to Chapman as Thomas takes a rest. He dives for about eight yards. That puts Chapman up to about 85 yards. So with with 23 left, he's capable of putting up 100 yards today also. And uh, the way the offensive line's looking, there's just under three minutes left in the game. They could pretty much burn up the whole clock right here. Probably won't throw much more to Moss, who has five catches for 109, 72 of those on one play. And, of course, five for 94. But Tim Martin, just an average routine day for those two receivers <laughs> for Marshall. And there's Moss, 6'5", excellent receiver, and only a freshman. Second down and two. And off to Chapman. He'll have the first down and then some. Gets across the five, battles his make the 15 down around the nine-yard line. First and goal to go for the Thundering Herd. They stop the clock to move the chain at 2.26 left to go. Cliff, it's been an enjoyable day for us here in Boone, North Carolina. Safe trip back to Las Vegas. Nice to see you again. Oh, got, a, got a big game to play tomorrow, though, Sam. A big game. Yeah, go from here to, uh, i got to fly to Cleveland tonight. And tomorrow's the first annual Pittsburgh Steelers-Cleveland Browns alumni game. Oh, yeah? We're going to get killed. You're going to get killed. <laughs> I, mean, we, I saw the rosters. The Browns loaded up with all their running backs, defensive backs, linebackers, receivers. And we've got all our linemen from the late 70s. So. Now, have you been practicing for this now? Oh, gosh, no. no Practice is over. We're trying to prove you can play with no training camp. I hear you. Okay. <laughs> Which I don't think they'll buy, but nonetheless, they may. If you can go in there with a bunch of guys 35 to 45, 46 and play with no training camp, I think it'll send a clear signal to the NFL that we need to do away with preseason games and six weeks away from home. And it's going to be a penalty stepped off against Marshall off after all of this is said and done as the dampness of the crowd certainly showing with the rain jackets. No umbrellas, by the way. We're allowed inside the stadium, which... For the folks sitting behind you, I know, is a nice uh, rule. Arrest that person That's down right. There. there is one down in the stands one. below us there. I see yours propped in the corner, too. Yeah, well, I'll do it. Use it outside, not in the stands. <laughs> so there you see one there you uh, of the umbrellas. It's up because it's raining here in Boone. And it's raining on the Appalachian State Parade right now. Their homecoming spoiled by the Marshall Thundering Herd as they've come in. They lost here in the Fog Bowl. Rain and all kinds of things two years ago. But they come back and... Look like they're on the verge of wrapping up the victor here as Chapman again goes to the outside. Still on his feet, knocked out of bounds on the far side by Johnson. The coaches will yell at him for that, for letting himself get out of bounds. That's right. <laughs> but he wants 100 yards. He just had one of his runs called back. He wants 100. Where is he now? He's 84, and they're on the 15-yard line. He can't do it. Can't make it? No, nope. he can't. But it's a second down and about four yards needed here for Marshall as they run the clock at 2.04 once the ball is snapped. Chapman getting out of bounds, staying in. Thomas is officially through for the day. Ran for 118. Presser with a snap has not thrown at all in this drive. As he hands off again and Chapman will get another couple of yards, bringing up a third down at about two. And now Appalachian State is going to spin one of their timeouts to stop the clock with 1.57 to go. And yeah, these young ladies and gentlemen have every right in the world to be happy. And you know, this is kind of a fun ride for all of them, the fans and the uh, cheerleaders, the number one team in the country. They travel with them very well, as you can see from the Marshall support all over the country. And certainly will be hosting the one AA championship game, which they hope that they'll be in again for probably the umpteenth time and hope to get another championship for Marshall and the Thundering Herd on their way out of one AA football. Well, they've certainly gone out on a roll. I mean, since since the, in the 90s, they've been there every year but one, I think. Of course, Youngstown, they played three years in a row against my old school, one, two, one of those. Youngstown, of course, beat them the other two times. i got to keep Pumping the yep. Penguins, I, I you know. know. That. Yep. By the way, the Southern Conference, where the current membership has eight 1AA championships. Of course, Georgia Southern owning four of those. And, of course, getting those before they became a member of the conference. And now a very successful member, and they'll be seen on television immediately following our game as they go against the Bulldogs of the Citadel. Coach Don Powers taking over down at the Citadel this year, and uh, Frank Elwood coming out of retirement to coach at Georgia Southern. He said he will not coach next year. There's a nationwide survey of coaches and inquiries on if they're interested in coming to Georgia Southern. Very likable football community down in Statesboro, so I'm sure we'll see very successful man coming in there starting next year. But they'll play coming up next here on Sports South. Third down, two yards to go. Right 
was a man in motion as they give up to Chapman again. He had to gain about the 11-yard line. And we'll get down near that point, but uh, Loyal wait and unstack. Dexter Coakley. Coakley, by the way, came into this game, and I would imagine if stats bear us out, will be in double figures on tackles again today. He's had 35 for his career, and 18 out of the last 19 games, he's made 10 or more tackles. And it's just been a dominating force in all of Southern Conference football. And we'll go on, and a lot of the scouts have been looking at him. They've been in camp and have been most impressed with Dexter Coakley. And also, the oh, nice thing about it is an uh, outstanding young man, and uh, they look as much at character as they do talent a lot, and they have to now. I think more and more it's getting that way in the NFL because they've had so many situations where teams draft a great player and haven't really spent the time to figure out what kind of person he is. But uh, gosh, this day and age, the way the, the this day and age, the way the media covers everything, I mean, you you've just got to be. Uh, you can't take a risk drafting a player that's a risk. So uh, they really do look into what kind of people you are. Well, it is a fishbowl once you get to that level. And certainly Cliff has enjoyed that with a Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers and still is going to chunk it a little. And again, uh, we'd like to say thank you for joining us today on Sports South. Don't forget, we'll be at our next game coming up, Georgia Southern against the Citadel, live from Charleston on a rainy afternoon from Boone. We'll check out the weather and the football in the Southern Conference coming up immediately following our game. Fourth down play as Marshall is going to try to just wind this one out if they can. Give it off to Chapman, and the hole is open. The ball is free. It's on the ground. And who's got it down inside the five-yard line? It's going to be Appalachian State's ball. They get a turnover, but probably too little too late as Chapman had the first down, and it was popped out of his hands and, of course, recovered by Appalachian State. Even though one of the Marshall players is not exactly satisfied that that was Belonging to another player as he gets up a little slowly, but running out of there, it looked like it was Hatcher off the bottom of the stack. Well, everybody's trying to, they're still fighting and doing things they can, puts a good hit on the football, head right on the ball, pops it loose. I don't think anybody can hang on to it when you hit it perfectly like that. And nobody could really find a handle on it when it got on the ground either. By the way, the big hit was put on, I believe, by Joey Hall, number 24. That spun down the loose. This is Baker. Running out of the pocket, looking upfield. Plenty of time to throw. Throws to the near sideline. And got his receiver open for a catch. And that's Joey Gibson, who had played earlier in the first half. Out of bounds around the 20-yard line. Stopping the clock with a minute 31 to go. It's good to see Furman playing well again. Uh, it is. The past couple of years, they've been just so-so. Bobby Johnson's doing a good job down there. Got to play golf with him a few times when I was living in Greenville before I moved. He's a good guy, and you know that program was one of the top programs there in the late 80s, and it's good to see them playing well and uh, until today undefeated in the conference. Now some motion on the line and coming across the line of scrimmage. I believe Bill Lyons indicating that he saw the right guard jump a little bit. And in case that is the situation, it'll be a five-yard step off against Appalachian State. Furman, by the way, losing today to East Tennessee, 21 to 19, and the only other final so far in the Southern Conference means that Mike Cavan and the Buccaneers are staying undefeated in the conference and will be joined only by Marshall now as the undefeated teams in Southern Conference play, and they will meet. As a matter of fact, that big game is coming up at to Johnson City. Oh, you don't think the mini dome is going to be full? They'll have that on November the 9th. Here's the throw to the outside, and Baker has to throw it away as he's nailed it just as he gets it away, and B.J. Cohen puts a tattoo on him and incompleted to stop the clock a minute 12. And it'll be second down here for the Mountaineers. Mountaineers again in their next game will be playing at uh, UT Chattanooga. Old Chamberlain Field again will be demolished after this season, and their brand-new stadium will be on. Rushing yardage, you see one of the reasons that Marshall has stayed successful in this game. They've had a reasonably balanced game with 214 yards on the ground. Nice day by Chapman and certainly by Thomas. Baker, in his first start against the number one team in the country, has acquitted himself quite well as he rolls out of the pocket and throws it well over Smith on the run. And incomplete, stops the clock again, 106 with a third down play coming to the Mountaineers. Boy, this is one position you hate to be in as a quarterback. I mean, a minute left. You've got 90 yards to go. <laughs> the good-looking guy. I did my brother to the game today. He's a little early, I think, or oh, a little late. I'm not sure what that guy is. 
quarterback, of course, always takes the abuse late, as you indicated, and uh, it'll be Baker under pressure again. Throws it out to Burton. Burton with a one-hand try, incomplete. Again, stops the clock, brings up fourth down. A minute one to go. The defensive line's pinning their ears back, coming after you. The secondary's just laying back in deep zones, reading your eyes. You know you have to you, – five, six, seven-yard gains aren't going to do you a lick of good, especially this late. If there are four or five minutes, might be different. But you've got to move the ball downfield. It's uh, it's not. It doesn't look good on your stats a lot of times. <laughs> and Baker now is the fourth down play. First time they've gone on a fourth down play this this day. He's back to throw. Dumps it off underneath to Scott. Scott's got to get to the 30. He won't do it, and that'll be a turnover going over to Marshall as they fail on down, stopping the clock with 52 seconds left to go, and Marshall will just run out the clock. So the Thundering Herd will have marched in here and taken their eighth victory of the year and their first victory here in Boone since 1987, avenging a loss here two years ago and certainly a loss in their building in the stadium up there 10 to 7 last year. 10 to 3, excuse me, last year up in Marshall. And I would say by the adjustments and what they've done in the second half, but taking away the 72-yard touchdown strike, let's face it, there was fairly good coverage when Moss made the play. Number one in one double-A was, I think, well tested today by Appalachian State. Well, they really were, and they don't have an easy road the next three weeks with uh, the Citadel and, and uh, East Tennessee, East Tennessee and Furman. And, Furman. Yeah. and at East Tennessee, that's going to be a real tough one for them. But they, they've got a lot of talent there, and, and for some reason over the past several years, even when they may not have been as good, Appalachian State has matched up very well, and they've just had Marshall's number, and today Marshall got a little bit of revenge. Well, you saw Eric Cresser just take the snap and take a couple of steps back and then took the knee. Bob Pruitt was about 15 yards out on the field and said, just take the knee. Let's don't get anything hurt here. Let's not do anything foolish. So we'll see how quickly Cresser will go down this time on the knee. And he goes down quickly, takes instructions well, I can tell. You know, as a quarterback, that should go as like a non-play, like a sacrifice bunt. <laughs> it always goes against your stats. Well, that'll wind it out, and Marshall's able to celebrate as Jerry Moore and his club again will lose this afternoon with a score of 24 to 10. Congratulations to Bob Pruitt. He stays unbeaten as the head coach in his first year for Marshall. Well, it's been a delightful afternoon for us. Hope you've enjoyed our telecast on Sports South. Georgia Southern against the Citadel coming up in just a moment. More clips out. Matt Suarez. This is Sam Smith saying so long for Boone. Our final score, Marshall 24, Mountaineers 10. Stay tuned. There's more coming up. Thank you.